the Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill. Hi there and welcome along to your Saturday night dose of sporting entertainment here at the Modus Super Series. It is finals night here, the last chance to qualify for Champions Week next week. And look at this, who I've got alongside me, who better to talk you through the six players than the former world champion Scott Mitchell. Scott, just, just give us your first impressions of the Super Series. Well, it's been amazing. I've been, I've been sort of glued to it a little bit this week. And, uh, you know, I'd heard about the venue, obviously, you have coming here in September. And... Um, Look, it's everything I thought it would be. This is a purpose-built venue to play great darts. Yeah, and most of the players tonight are actually older than Scott, so they feel a bit different this evening. Uh, before we do get into tonight's action, let's look at what happened last night with Henry Deacon. Mark Dubbridge was a man to beat in Group A as Flash sparked the week into life and secured the first finals night spot. For the culture box of the stage, it was like Chris Mason had never been away. After some top averages in Group A, it was a five-star Thursday which booked his place in tonight's red carpet occasion. Gary Watson would end up being the winner of Group C, and his consistency throughout the five days makes him one of the favourites to scoop the £5,000 top prize. Richie Housen dominated Group B in the evening sessions, and this 1-6-1 was the second highest finish we've seen so far this week. Andy Jenkins will bring an army of fans of him to the live lounge tonight. The local favourite progressed his way into second place in Group B. If there's one walk-on to spring us into life, it will be Hey Baby and the orchestral leader Tony O'Shea will be here to lead the way as he keeps up his good record of qualifying for Saturday night. Yeah, really good stuff all week, and we're going to have a look now at how the players got to finals night, starting with the Group A table, which was won by Mark Dubridge. Tony, uh, I know you were talking to Mill Fair about how good his power scoring was in that group. Dubridge actually stood out there, but he was giving himself enough time to have five darts at a double. His doubling wasn't quite what it was, but we've got to not forget, all the guys have been a little bit rusty. They haven't done this side of thing for a while, and the rustiness is now going after four or five days. Well, Group C, which was played the Thursday and Friday daytime sessions was won by Chris Mason. Now, speaking of potentially being rusty, he hadn't played for about 12 years in proper competitive darts. I know he'd done a little bit on the seniors tour recently, um, but he's the very reason you're studying here tonight, Scott, because he was rooted in to commentate. Actually, you can see I borrowed one of his shirts from 10 years ago. Uh, you know, we used to be the same size and everything. Um, no, he's, he's been very impressive as well, I think. He was very underrated at the start of the week, and he showed what he can do. A little unfortunate in the first two days. Yeah, and Alan Norris was a little unfortunate as well. He won all five of his matches on Friday, but it wasn't enough to get through. Uh, in Group B, three players getting through from the five there, and Richie Housen was very impressive. Andy Jenkins, he'll have plenty of support in this evening, and Tony O'Shea, he's got support wherever he goes, but it won't be a clash of the commentators because Paul Nicholson didn't quite make it through. Unfortunately, that would have been a nice one for us to be able to talk about them. For me, lovely, because they've talked enough about me. Uh, we're going to have a look now at the groups that they play in this evening. So it's a round-robin format, everyone in each group playing each other, and then the top two go into the semi-finals from each group. The winner of Group 1 playing the runner-up in Group 2, and so on. Just casting your eye over those groups, Scott, let's get your first prediction as a pundit here at the Super Series. Well, I'm, I'm looking at Group 1, and, and, and Gary Robson's definitely the underdog there. I think, I think everybody will be looking at the hometown favourite, Andy Jenkins. You know, he can get home before most of us can get a coat off the back of the chair. <laughs> He'll be home. Um, but Dubbridge's power scoring has been brilliant. Group 2, um, I think that's really even. You know, if, if Richie Alson could get off to a good start, we've seen him dominate. But Mason, 
playing great. And again, we saw Tony O'Shea nearly top the group. It's, it's these six, any one of these six could win it. I really can't call it. It is an unpredictable evening. We'll hear plenty from Scott throughout the course of the night. But now let's hear from our first two players in action. They caught up with Phil Bars earlier. It's Mark Dubridge and Gary Robson. Flash, first of all, are you feeling a little bit better? Because you were a bit rough towards the end of the, um, the group on Wednesday. Yeah, well, I've, I've been, I've had the lurgy for a couple of weeks and uh, sort of at the tail end of it. But um, yeah, I've had two days of resting up and having, uh, you know, boiling up oranges, lemons and honey and doing everything correctly. And uh, my voice has come back a little bit and I, I do feel a little bit better. You must be pleased with the way Group A went, stormed to victory, hitting 180s for fun. Flash is back. Well, I wouldn't say back, you know, the 180s were lovely. Um, Doubling was a bit to be desired at times. But, yeah, I, I was so pleased to get through in the end. I know it was, it was uh, only by a leg or two. But to have the two days off is uh, really, really helped me. Gary, got here right at the last minute from Group C. You must be happy to be here. Over the moon, over the moon. When I come down on Monday, obviously, I'd done the interview with Ian said, just so good to be here. And then after, the, like, day three, it was like, do you know what it is? I need to be playing here on the Saturday night with the crowd just so I can experience everything. When I lose, I'm here, but obviously head will be on the night and see what we can do. Now, now you are here for finals night. Going to be a danger, do you fancy the job? I hope so, I hope so. Obviously, I've got Dubbridge first game, who's qualified on the Wednesday, but he's had two days off, and I've, I haven't played brilliant, but I've struggled through and fought, but I've had the match practice and all that, so, you know, fingers crossed. Well, Scott Mitchell's gone to join Henry Deacon in commentary. Enough chatter for now, I think. It's time to get the Arrows action underway for the evening with our MC and referee for the night, Mr Marco Meyer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here at the Modus Super Series here in the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We go on the way with our first game. Please welcome to the stage Flash, Mark Dubridge, and Robbo, Gary Robson. So, very good evening, everyone. Welcome along to finals night here at the Modus Super Series. And so, 11 invitations have been sent out to the Champions Week party, but only one more player can gain the final spot in the exclusive Super Series club. For these six legends of the game, there is a golden chance to return down memory lane and in front of a loud and proud Portsmouth crowd, they'll enjoy the buzz and electricity of big stage darts in front of a packed out audience and have a look at it it really is packed to the rafters you cannot get a ticket inside here tonight to see flash mark dubbridge the 49 year old from britain we will see him star at the world seniors championship in february next year i think it's gary robson who's graced us our screens for a number of years the former world trophy champion and talking about champions we couldn't have a night of legends without having the first like it's mark the champion, first scott Game mitchell on. alongside me in the commentary box scott great to have you here I am just absolutely thrilled to be here. I've been glued to this one this week anyway, um, fr from day one. Lots of friends have been playing this week. Lots of people that I haven't seen for one a long on time. 40. And uh, you can see everybody wants to see them. That's why this place is packed tonight. It really is packed to the rafters. You can't get a ticket inside here this evening. 28. A lot of them will be here, of course, to see the hometown favourite Andy Jenkins in action. He plays in game three against Robson. But the law, the likes of Dubbridge, O'Shea, Mason and Howson will also be firm 18. in their minds. And this is the first time obviously you've been here in a commentary capacity. I know you've been around the crowd and everything else. The scene, what are your impressions of this is Robson One on looks as if he's going to get our first max of the evening. I think when you mention the word purpose built on anything that you've ever built and done, this is the place for that. It is set up for you to get up there and play the very best darts you've got. It really 59. is a nice setup. We've heard players saying it week after week since this place opened. And now that I'm here, I can see why. 
It's one of those places where you have to see it to believe it. And if you want to 16. be a part of this crowd every single week, it's dartshop.tv, the place to go for it. But in this opening leg of the first game of Group 1, there's two groups tonight, six players split into two groups of 58. three. We're going to see Mark Dubbridge, Gary Robs, and Andy Jenkins in Group 1, while in Group 2 is Richie Housen, Tony O'Shea, and Chris Mason. The top two progress their way through to the semi-finals, and then we'll play all the way down to the winner. 16. We'll qualify Mark for Champions League and get the £5,000 top prize. Mark Dubbridge then first to finish in this opening leg, 164. Well, he might not go for it, but it would have been some way to kick-start the evening match. 140. It certainly would have livened that crowd up. The 140 still does the job, though, doesn't it? Leads to 24. Three clear darts in front. Strange one, this one, because probably Dutch Bridge is the one. Oh, hello, Robbo's in now. 139. Mark would require 24. Nothing quite like scoreboard pressure. Yeah, that's game shot in the, the first one. applies to Flash, who is 1 0 up in a flash here against the man from the Northeast. Qualified through Group A. Second so he's line had against a Gary Defoe first. Days game off on. and not being disrespectful to the field here, but we do have some veterans of the game. Do you think maybe that little bit of a break may have helped them out? 55. We're asking the wrong person here. I'm only one or two years younger than some of these people. Um, no, I think I think maybe if you're feeling rusty, you'd have wanted to have played. But if you're not, you know, you, you run around the rest. So I think for me, Robbo's probably not the favourite in this group. So he would be, he should be looking at this mentally to say, I really want to play Dubbridge first round, first game when he's cold. And this, this is what you'd be thinking about. So, and also, he's just lost the first leg and he didn't have the throw. So he's still not in a position where he should be worried about anything at the moment. As you mentioned, you've watched a lot of the action this week on the TV screen. One on the end, sure, Surely around the farm somewhere, probably on an iPhone or something, on the tractor maybe? Yeah, I might have done, but also don't forget us farmers used to watch Neighbours all the time, and that went at the end of August, 99. so I was looking for something to watch at lunchtime, and now all of a sudden the Moda Super Series has come up when I'm having me, me plowman's lunch. What have you made of what you've seen so far from the, the players on show? I think I think it's been very 85. impressive. Obviously, we've seen some, some unknown players that, that will be not household names to people, absolutely blasting some great legs and some great scores. And, and I think particularly this week, this is kind of, I, I don't really, 55. I hate that roll back the years, but it's just lovely to see these people back up there all together as a mix. It's, a, it's been a really good idea this week. And as we can see from the crowd, it really has gripped people. It has harboured interest as the Super Series continues to grow. And 42. next week will be the red letter day where someone will win £20,000. More on that later on this evening because our full focus is on the group stage action. Dubbridge then. 140 points away from a break of throw and a 2 0 lead. 60. And only a Mark 60 there from 140. The throw has effectively been turned in this leg by Dubbridge. He is effectively ahead and he is really ahead now. He will look not to 100. deflect it. That was a nice high Gary, you require 132. So, Robson's got to take this 1 3 2. Surely he's got to start the ball route. He has, but that's uh, maybe visit over. Needed a 19 there. Not really. 35. He's not Mark really put pressure on Dutch 40. Bridge, and he's got three darts in his hand again at this double top. Tops for 2 0. No score. Uh, I thought those first two darts was a nice Gary lie, but not to me. 97. He did, he's done this a little bit in those first three days. He, he, he gave himself opportunities for three in his hand and messed them up. But Robbo's not really doing anything here to trouble him. He's going to get another three. 85. Mark, you require 40. Double six, should he return? So, Dubbridge being warred on by the crowd. Wants tops. Yeah, that's been shown in the second And line. opens up a 2-0 lead. Dubbridge. And importantly, in this shorter course group stage format, is not just victories, but it is the margin of Third victory as well. It's Mark to throw first. Game Indeed, on. and obviously he's now throwing with all the confidence in the world of being 2-0 up. And Robbo will be looking at the floor thinking, where has it gone wrong? And... Uh, Unfortunately, it was probably one score in that second leg that he away where the throw got turned. You know, win 4-0 on 4-1, put yourself in a magnificent position going into your final game of the group. One Especially on for Gary 40. Robson, he would have wanted to go out the blocks firing because he's playing the middle match of Group 1 against Andy Jenkins. So following the conclusion of that game, he'll have no bearing on the group whatsoever as we look at the 59. actions of the two players on... 
show. Gary Robson's action really hasn't changed, has it, throughout the years? No, and, and you'll see that he has got this slight flick action. It's 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 not chizzy like by any shape of magic or form, but twenty six. If you know Gary like the last fifteen years, like I have, there's a, just that little flick that one just comes in, and sometimes it actually lands in the treble. So that's why he does nothing about it. It's just something that's always been there. And with Dubbridge, I mean, he's always been that solid throw, never move. Forty. Elbow is the only pivot point, and uh, he's been like that for years. One hundred. It's uh, very much a pompy crowd in here this evening at the live lounge. I do not want to know what the decibel volume 100. will be when Andy Jenkins gets onto the stage. Yeah, absolutely. There's one or two faces in the crowd that I haven't seen for uh, for a while. There's actually a fella from Dorset in there, uh, Mark Stapleton. Haven't seen him for 65. a few years, and uh, he's in the crowd there, sat at the front. So, uh, yeah, Danny, Danny's in here as well, former Hampshire player. He's in here having a look. So, um, yeah, to, obviously to support Andy Jenks. 92. I mean, you know, he is the hometown Gary, hero. you require 170. Even took me a couple of minutes to get from the crowd into the country box tonight. I know you find it, probably find it hard to believe, but... Yeah, I do. 45. Mate, so, Mark, yeah. you require 132. Well, the carpet. Dubbridge wants 1 3 2 for a 3 0 lead. Shovel 19. Would have left him a dart at the ball. Not that he would have seen much of it for in the one first half. So Gary, you require 125. Yeah, he'll be starting the same route. And that one doesn't help. So he's down on 1 2 3. He'll go back up. Where's he going with 63? Is he going to go treble nine? Oh, 75. The usual route. Mark, you require 28. So it's Dubbridge again with three clear darts before Robbo's got there. Yeah, that's game shot and, and a bird one. one. Three more lead for Dubbridge. And he's already within one of an opening win. Ford Lark is Gary the throw first. put him on the hill game right on. from the get go. If you win 4 0, you don't have to do too much in the second game. 99. It usually takes a big defeat, usually by four legs to nil, to eliminate you from the process. It's almost like an insurance policy of some description. I think every player that's watching has been in this position in a game, and you just start 14. thinking, "I just want a leg." Let's let's let's, you, let's come back starts by having to win that first leg, which is always difficult because everything's flying when you're three nil up. You can, you know, throw them over your shoulder One behind your head. And it's, uh, and it's difficult, but Robbo is showing his bounce-back ability here with that nice 180. And I want it look to the crowd as well as to say, what am I going to get just now? Well, there's still time, Gary. First maximum in front of this packed audience at the live lounge. Can you imagine if this was up in Newcastle and it was Robbo was the... One on the would be, you know, just as big as it is here in Pompey with Jenkins, wouldn't it? That would be sheer carnage. 100. Gary, you require 82. So, Robson for 82 then. Is he going ball or is he going 42? He has gone ball. Looks like a 17. 42. Well, he's tidied it up. Obviously, he's going to get three now. Dubbridge will be looking for his trademark 180s to uh, put the pressure on, and that's not going to happen this throw. But he's going to make a big dent in it. 95. Gary, you require 40. Yeah, a little miscount there. He would have liked to have left himself 167. Could have stayed downstairs, but it's Robbo for tops. Yeah, that's game short. And the two teams will do to get Gary Robson's Robson. first leg of the evening on the board. And so Dubbridge now has the throw to seal a 4 1 victory. Fifth flag is to take the opening game first. of the evening game to on. put him onto two points. And they put him in a nice position in the group. The audience get a great view here. Even the person sat at the back 54. is probably closer than the ones at the front at other events in other places. So uh, it is a really tight, congested, lovely venue. You know, you can you can feel the atmosphere. 60. A lot of people call it unique, and it's called unique because it, I, I can't think of anywhere else in the in the world of darts where you can watch top players in a environment like this 
Indeed, indeed. I've played in a few uh, 26 top events in the BDO, and this venue would have been lovely for it, to be honest. Well, he's found the troubles oh, now, hasn't he? That's no, his second no, match no, of the match. No, and the crowd wall to approval on. It's funny what a bit of cheering from the crowd does and a bit of confidence from winning a leg. It's uh, We've all been there, but now Dubbridge is now starting to fight back. One on the new 40. What a great reply. Because we see so often in this format, and it's so akin to best of seven darts, where one moment one can just completely 40. flip the game around. And we do see comebacks from 3-0 down. Not often, admittedly, but they can happen. They do happen a lot. It's a one short on the end, format. 40. Really is a Gary, short you format. require 121. And that's what makes this exciting. You haven't got time to settle. You've got to settle from the start and go and hope that you've got enough in the tank. 57. Mark, you require 141. So just a ton here. But that's not going to happen. Dubbridge is now. Where's he heading? So 62. 94. For the treble 10. Route. Gary Unit requires 64. Is a good. Has Robson found a spark? Well, he's missed the big number there. So he heads up for tops. He's only going to get one dart at double. Yeah, he that's only needs one the dart at double. And he does Gary break Robson. Dubbridge back. And it is suddenly game on. And maybe Robson has found that spark. The blue touch paper Six has been licked going for the, the North East first. Game on. Yeah, he seems to be the uh, crown favourite in this one. Uh, the crowd really getting into it, or whether is it, is it the crowd loving the underdog? The crowd always loves the underdog. Fifty-nine. And I just wonder for these players, Scott. They would have played behind closed doors all week, but they're they're used to big arenas, big crowds, big lights, big occasions. And for some players like the WG, who perhaps hasn't experienced this for a while. It must just be nice to have that feeling again, to have those nerves, the, you know, the, the hairs on the back of your skin. Absolutely. I mean, and the, the, the throw on the stage does feel like it's a big stage. It doesn't feel like a small stage. I walked up there and had a look, put my foot to the hockey, and, you know, it's it's proper job. 100. Reminder, after this, we all begin Group 2, and the first game of that is Richie House against Tony O'Shea. In some ways, it's a shame that it's joint war, because could you imagine Hey Baby in front of 40. that? <laughs> well, exactly. Exactly. So, One on the 40. not quite enough to turn the throw there from Dudbridge, but it does make him probably favourite. If Robson goes trebleless, but he's not going to do that. Is he staying there? 100. Sometimes Mark Uriquan, 161. A 25 is good to leave you 97 and a two data, but Robbo stayed up there. Now Dubbridge is back at this 161. Bullseye. One on and that would have been some way to seal the opening win. Gary Uriquan, 102. Away. But from 3 0 down, Gary Robson wants 102 to take us all the way to a deciding leg. He's going to get one dart at tops. 82. But it drags just underneath. And so Dubbridge will have the opportunity to eventually 25. get over the line. So where's he going? He's going nine. Yep, the traditional route is double eight for Dubbridge for the King. match. And he Shots nails it first and dart. And he'll probably be relieved because that was a big comeback there from Robson and he had the chance to go 3-3. Three, three. Indeed he did. So Mark Dubbridge claims the opening rubber of the night with an 88.2 average. Robson got two maximums, but it turned out to be in vain in the end. But crucially for him in this short course group stage format, he's got two legs on the board. That could be pivotal at the end of proceedings later on this evening. Four out of eight on the doubles for Mark Dubbridge got him home and hose. He's the first winner of the evening. We're going to start group two after this short break. It's Richie Housen up against Tony O'Shea.
Welcome back. Look at that as quick as a flash. We're back here at the live lounge at the Moda Super Series where Mark Dubridge has got off to a flying start. The Bristolian former world championship finalist beating Gary Robson by four legs to two, hitting half of his double attempts in that match. No 180s, which had been the kind of key feature of his game when he won Group A earlier in the week. Gary Robson getting a couple, but Mark Dubridge getting a, a strong start in the game, going 3-0 up, and Robson could not recover. Well, we uh, move into the other group now and a meeting between Richie House and the Owl and the silverback Tony O'Shea. Let's hear from both players. Richie, you stormed to Group B. Take, taking it all in from last night? Oh, yeah, it was fantastic last night. Um, I think when, after the first game, I played Wes, and you sort of told me I was through... The adrenaline dropped a little bit, and I think I found it a little bit harder the next few games, but I relaxed, and I played well against Tony in the last game, so it was nice to come into tonight playing well in the last game yesterday. It's going to be a full house in there tonight. Are you looking forward to him playing in front of a crowd? Yeah, it's going to be completely different, because it's so quiet out there during the week, and uh, now it's really not going to be. So, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be great. Tony, you came through Group B. It was a tough group, so you must be delighted to be here. Yeah, I mean, before yesterday started... Um, I'd done all right the night before, but it was always going to be hard. Uh, the guys are playing well, and you know I've, I lost three games, I think, but I managed to squeak through. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be here tonight. Yeah. You've done many things, but fans here tonight—it's going to be an exciting night, isn't it? Um, already, I think, just round the town, people are talking about it. Most of them are here to watch uh, Jenks, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, it's, obviously we've had we've had that studio feel all week, and, and to get a crowd there might sort of put me up a bit. These short group games, does it feel like the Grand Slam to you? Which was one of my favourite uh, places to go and play darts because it was short and fast and, and that crowd were always noisy and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed them. If it's anything like that tonight, I, I should be all right. Uh, well, I'm sure a few fans have come to see Silverback Tony O'Shea. It's his second finals night in three attempts at qualifying. Takes on Richie Houston, who topped Group B, played really well in it as well. He had a massive checkout percentage, around 50%. Brilliant stuff from him. Will the owl fly high again this evening, or will it go O'Shea's way? We'll find out in the company of Henry Deacon and Scott Mitchell, and it's time to hand over to our MC, Marco Meyer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back here at Finals Night at the Modus Super Series here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Please welcome the next two players for the stage is Richie, the Owl, Housen, and Tony, the Silverback, O'Shea. And so the beginning of Group 2 here at Finals Night in the Super Series sees a meeting of two semi-finalists earlier this year at the Seniors World Masters. Richie Housen, who's been one of the stars of the Seniors Tour in 2022, takes on Tony O'Shea. And if there's one player who's going to thrive under this big stage atmosphere, under the big lights in front of the crowd here at the Live Lounge, surely it's going to be the crowd favourite, the man who made Hey Baby his own. And he mentioned in his interview before getting underway, as we see the 56-year-old Housen from Raynham, and uh, played in that World Seniors Championship, which is five minutes away from his house, where the Circus Tavern is based against O'Shea. Big Stockport fan. He was planning to go to Edgley Park today if he didn't qualify for tonight's finals. I don't know how he filled that by, uh, that void. First lap gets Richie to throw first. The he didn't, but Game he on. mentioned in the interview before getting underway this evening, Scott, about how the format here is pretty similar to the Grand Slam. Now, you've played in that tour and yourself. What is that feeling like when you've got a short course group and you've got to worry about more than just the match? As a player, you just worry about coming out the blocks and you, you worry about winning the bull up because the format is so short and obviously there's a distinct advantage, particularly if you can win 55. that first leg. So, but yeah, I would agree. I mean, again, what we were saying earlier, the crowd is close, you know, it's, it's a short format and You've got to be on it from the start, and, and it is very, very similar to the Grand Slam. 85. And Richie Housen really has been one of the beneficiaries of the senior tour. It's almost given him a 
second spark in 100. his starting career. Yeah, definitely. I saw him a bit in the BDO days. I remember, I think he beat me on an ice rink in Hull and, at one of the World Masters. I think I beat Paul Hogan first game and then got absolutely smashed by Mr. Housen. So um, that's when I first met him. And 45. he's just a genuinely nice guy. Loves his fishing. Loves his fishing. But he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's sort of, again, one of those that's enjoying this format. One I just need to clarify 40. something. You said played on an ice rink. You didn't have to wear skates or anything, did you? No, no, no. There was probably proper good bits of... Um, uh, five, five, uh, five sheet marine ply, you know, on top. It was, but it was cold that day, if I remember. Fifty-eight. Right. There's probably one or two of our viewers will remember, and they were there. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a bit chilly, but um, yeah, there was no, no complaints there about the hot weather. There'll be no complaints from O'Shea. One hundred seventy-four. To get to one seventy-four to leave thirty-two, the Dundas. In, <laughs> it's against the darts as well so this is an impressive start from 46 O'Shea. tony you require 32. for well, a 13 dart break to get his group underway yeah that's good show in the first line and we mentioned in tony the intro O'Shea. that one player was going to enjoy the environment of the crowds here at the live lounge it was going to be tony o'shea Second lag, the ultimate tony the throw man, first. hoping Game to be on. the ultimate throw man come the end of this evening nice bit of camaraderie there saying well done mate from uh, richie house i like that uh, I know, I know our, older, our older players don't like all that cuddling and all the, the you know, they, they like everybody to be at each other's throats, but um, that isn't always the way in this day and age of dart player. But uh, Richie Alston now, he'll be looking to chase Tony down. One on the down, 40. Straight back. It was interesting. We saw Mark Layton yesterday giving a fist bump pretty much, it seemed, after every single leg. He was really getting into the 100. spirit of the competition. Yeah, Mark, another one. We've done internationals together against each other, obviously home internationals with England, Wales and Scotland and World Cups. And uh, yeah, he's a good old stick, Mark. He's a good lad. And I love the fact that he's still getting that excited about darts. That enthusiasm. And you just hope it never dwindles, don't you? And for the players 14. that have played this week, even at the latter end of their careers or some that are just trying to reignite a spark, the love is very much there. For some, the passion never goes. 100. I was lucky enough to be in an England team when, when Tony was uh, uh, the captain. And uh, wow, what an inspirational captain speech. And that's just his love of the game, his love of his country and love of playing for his 91. country back then. Left himself on the fish. He is going to get a go at it, but under... How much pressure? Housen on 176 looking to get the break back. 100. A fair bit of Tony pressure. Tony, 170. So here we go with Tony. Well, that's going to be meaning he'll stay up there, I think. A nice ton here. 100. Pressure the shot. Which exactly requires 76. So 76 to Housen. Two eights. Yeah, but that's King Shaw in the second at line. The start of this Richie match. Housen. And Housen levels us back up at one apiece after Tony O'Shea went herring away. Third in the first leg. Richie to throw first. The owl has Game picked on. him back. Feels like one of those fables, doesn't it? The owl and the silver back. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure they're ever in the same country, are they? 100. I think John Lewis might use it for their Christmas advert. Well, you need to get that copyrighted nice and, early, 40. nice and early. Fifty-eight. Well, let's have a look at the averages here. Then, after the first leg and a half, Tony O'Shea averaging a shade under one hundred and four. And it's going up and going One up and as O'Shea heads down. Just goes to show any youngsters that are up at this time of night watching this, which there could well be, the big averages don't always 16. mean that you're three legs up. There we are, sat at 1-1. One, one. Nearly 20 points in the averages. You've got to hold your throws, and they've both been breaks. One on the so that 40. theory doesn't work either. And it looks as if we're going to get a third in succession. O'Shea is under 200 points in front at the start of this 100. visit. 100. Tony, you require 82. So 82. 
for an 11 dart leg. Double 16. Two eights. 66. But he is going to return. Another impressive leg. Sometimes as a dart player, when you haven't got the throw and you're not expected to win the leg, you can relax a little more and then your proper game comes out. 59. Throw tight. It's only you require 16. Pressure, it's very difficult to throw tight. Double four. There was nothing tight about that. That just yeah, went the other side. Sean Definitely the nothing line. tight about that. Tony O'Shea. And O'Shea opens up a 2-1 lead. It's a break half long here at finals night in the Super Series. O'Shea goes 2-1 up. Brackets, He'll Tony be the hoping first. that Game eventually on. there's going to be a hold. And he hopes it's going to be in this leg because it will put him one away from victory. And if he can win big, it puts him in a great position. 16. This is what we saw before. He had a great break in leg one. And... Uh, and didn't score in leg two, so off his first throw. And here we go, the pressure's straight back on. Because now Richie's a little bit relaxed because he knows it's not One his throw. 40. And I wonder what Richie's experience as the evening draws on of being in front of the big crowds at the 43. seniors events this year, maybe. Because he's, even though we've got players who've played in the biggest games, the biggest finals, they haven't done it recently where... Richie perhaps has. Yeah, very 16. much so. I think the seniors' experience would have, uh, you know, been experienced. Let's put it that way. Um, for some players, you know, the COVID really hit at the wrong time and some have had a real long break that they'd never had 40. before. And I think probably Tony's one of those. But although he's been doing the exhibition circuit for a long time and he's never not booked, he's always busy. And what a show he puts on as well, by the way. What a show the pair are putting on. One on the own, 40. Let's have a look at the throw of O'Shea here. It's very much a silky smooth action, isn't it? It's like a pendulum, isn't it, that doesn't change. 60. It's like that old grandfather Richie clock. Richie Uriguay, 161. Swing into the motion, the pendulum, and, and that's Tony O'Shea's throw to a tee. Now, Richie Housen's already taken out to 161 this week. He did it on Thursday one night. One on 25. Even 36 after 12 for what could be a fourth consecutive break of throw and in fairness 92. in the legs as well. The player Richie by first hasn't really 36. got close. This is becoming a game where nobody wants to start the leg. Two eights decide to split. Twenty eight back on 206. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Me, I'm one of those that says if you're going to split it, let's have a go at the double nine and have a chance of winning the leg. If you're going to split it, you're going to have nine, and you're going to end up there anyway. So 42. I would have gone for the double nine and had a chance to win Richie it. But that eight. has bitten me on the backside more occasions than I care to mention. Well, another miss on double two, and it could bite Housen. Four. If I show you, take out the block to 164. He'll go the traditional way of treble 20, treble 18 for the ball. No, two treble 19. 92. But you require four. And now double two for two two. Yeah, Desmond that's been shot than the fourth one. Here at the live lounge. And it is yet another break of throw. And Housen has the advantage of Dust. Well, in this game, it's been a disadvantage. Fifth flag is Richie the throw first. If we're going all the way on. to a deciding leg, we're not pulling up because I think we might see some darts in tyres. <laughs> Indeed. Our uh, referee. Marco will definitely have to step back if uh, we go if it was bull up at the 100. end there because nobody would want to start that's for sure. But the law of averages says somebody's going to hold a throw at some point in a minute. 85. It doesn't happen often, but we have seen games where all seven legs have gone against the darts. It is a very rare phenomenon or phenomenon. That's easy for you to say. Very easy. 100. <laughs> yeah, or not, as the case may be. Yeah, very true. Is Chris Murphy back in the commentary box? Uh, 94. Chris Murphy's our man upstairs looking pretty. I see he's done his hair and everything tonight, so I knew he was front of cams. Must have had the makeup on as well, do you reckon? I couldn't say. 16. It, it, was a, it, was a, it was a nice shade of tweed that you had on. Very nice. Must have been a not guilty this morning. I didn't think it was 58. That nice, you know? 
But, uh, yeah. So this leg seems to have petered out a little bit. The big scores, it's... Uh, Still even Stephen in this 100. one. Well, Houston could be on for a hole. Now, in the history of this tournament, there's only been 12 occasions where every leg has been won one against on the front. 40. And three of them have happened in this particular series. Jared Cole did it in week two against Reese Robinson. And as we see, Houston looked to try and get himself a hold. We saw Moreno Blum do it against Andy Hamilton in week nine. Alex Small against Stephen Belmont. But well, O'Shea will be hoping that that trend continues by taking out this one, two, four. Trouble 18. We'll give him a dart at the ball. Yeah, Three that's Kim Sean in the fifth flag. Tony it O'Shea. It was never in doubt, was it? The break fest continues. Is this, could we call this point break? Six flag, it's Tony to throw first. Game on. Well, I would say O'Shea has the darts for the match, but does he want the darts for the match? <laughs> Who knows? 85. Again, look at the frustration on his face. He's, you know, they've both been breaking through here. Um, and Richie will be thinking, well, we'll go back. This is just the normal. I'll just go and break again. It's no problem. Because once you've broken 100. twice, you do believe you can continue to do it. It's a strange thing that gets in a dart player's head. Once they start thinking, they've had it. 109. No thinking about that. Team. Just the repetitive action. The repetitive thud into the board. And the dulcet tones of Marco Mayo, our referee. 100. I thought you said the dorset tones there. I said, you know, he lives nowhere near me. He's from Holland. We've got the dorset tones next to me, that's for sure. That's unlucky for Moshe. That's 60 65. points on the floor. We saw yesterday, or well, Thursday, I think it was, with Wes Newton. He had two trouble twenties bounce out. And we all know when you hit them 180s, you've got to back them up. To make the 180 be as 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 hurting or hurtful as it can be, and when you hit 65 after, it's not you know you're averaging it out there a couple of tons keeps you in it. Well, six starts to O'Shea for the match for the game's first hold to secure the last 89. leg. It would be of the match. He's already taken out an 82. But back comes Housen. One it was never going to be easy, was it? Tony so 82, 82 for the match for O'Shea to secure victory. Yeah, that's eight. That's 74 left. It's treble 14, 20. Oh. 22. Loose one Richard there. Uricor and you pick 76. up on those moments. So Will Halson make him pay. He's going to get two at double eight for Dart Jarvu. Yeah, that's it been shown in a six line. Because for the second Richie time Hansen. in this match, Richie Housen has taken out a 76 to break. And we go all the way to a deciding Seven leg. Seven final arc is Richie from first, first Going Game against on. the darts. It's Richie Housen who has the honour in the final leg. Now, the big question here is, should O'Shea have gone for treble 14 on that 82? Because the 14 would have left him 16. One on the own 14. And he'd already hit the bullseye. You've got to win a leg. You've got to get a dart or something to win it. And maybe going for the bullseye. That was a risky move at that point. We were 41. talking earlier on this week when I was in the comedy box with Chris Murphy about players going the old school way. And because of that, sometimes you don't utilize the board enough and don't give yourself as many opportunities at a double that you may do if you look elsewhere. 45. I always thought the old school way for 82 is definitely treble 14. It was the way that I was taught when I was a 16 year old kid. And it was only the sort of the use of the ball that's come in in the last 10 or 15 years. 16. It wasn't a shot that was even thought of back then. But in that instance, I think that might have been a better way to go. What's nice to see is, it's a packed crowd, it's a loud crowd, but it's the best of order with game on. It might be a bit louder in a few minutes time 100 and it can be that one voice in a crowd that you just pick up when it's not quite going right that can throw you into turmoil in your head 100 and tons will do for housing at this juncture he's himself on 116 he's the first to a finish he's going to get six starts of the match 
94. Richie, you require 116. Good switch from O'Shea there, but he still has a mountain to climb here, and it's all going to be dependent on what his opponent does. He's going to head downstairs. Trouble 17, the 76. target. That's exactly what he gets to leave tops after 15, and he's going to return four match darts. Tony would just fill this up and leave double 13, I'd have thought. Just fill it up. 123. Oh, Richie, you require 40. And so Housen wants tops. One left. Is that awkward? No score. It is awkward. Great call, H. Great call. That, that Tony second arm was awkward. 83. Just tilting down. So O'Shea with 83 has to get a dart at a board. No, he's not. He's going to get a dart. Double 16, double 8 for the match. No score. And you can see... What O'Shea Which you require made of that. 40. And so Housen has three more at tops. Double ten. This has been a friend all week. But that's a flyer. Double seven. 33. And it's getting scrappy at the end embers of this game. Tony, you require Takes 83. Nervous, Hannah, get the anodin out. The 16s. The bull for the match. 37. But it doesn't go for O'Shea, and so Houghton now left on seven. seven. Two twos. Madhouse. No score. O'Shea really thought Tony, he was never going to be coming 46. back now. This is where the experience has to show. Double 16 for O'Shea to win the Tony Free Cup at the Super Series to kick off Group 2's action. And the sound of Hey Baby means O'Shea is the victor with an average of 85.47. One maximum apiece in the match. Four out of ten on the doubles. It was an exhibition of finishing at times. A 1-2-4 is the highlight for O'Shea. He's on the board. He's got two points. And if you think it's loud in the live lounge now, it's about to go up a few decibel levels because the Pompey ace, Andy Jenkins, is going to be play-up rocky after the break as he takes on Gary Robson.
had their welcome back and it's not so much a case of welcome back from the break than welcome back from the breaks after that incredible match between Tony O'Shea and Richie House and every single leg in it going against a throw. It's a 4-3 victory for Tony O'Shea in that one. A quick look at the stats from that game uh, will reveal that Tony O'Shea, that 1-2-4 checkout on the ball, a real highlight, decent checkout percentage from him but look at that from Richie House and on the left hand column 18.75% 3 out of 16 a million miles from where he's been the rest of the week and that is the reason why Tony was afforded so many break opportunities and why Silverback got over the line so a very very interesting start House and a strong favourite in that group but O'Shea playing spoiler in that one well next up it is Rocco against Robbo or Rocky against Robbo even as we move on to group one so once again and it's Gary nine yep the traditional route is double eight for Dubbridge for the match Game. and he Shot. nails it first if Gary Robson does lose out once again having lost to Mark Dubbridge earlier then he is out of the tournament that's it it's a long road home to Newcastle for Gary Robson and it's going to be a tough task isn't it because he's got the hometown hero Andy Jenkins in front of him a few of the fans here tonight have come specifically to see Rocky on the hockey and Phil Bars caught up with Jenkins earlier on you've seen many things in darts but that law of champions week 20,000 pounds prize money is that playing on the Andy Jenkins mind yet no not at all um I don't play this, I, you know, it, I never started this game to play for money because I, I enjoy it. And now I still enjoy it and with my age I am, I enjoy the buzz, I enjoy having a wind up as you lot know. And um, I enjoy playing competition darts and then beating some of these boys and still beating them. A few mind games in the practice room going to start shortly? Obviously, you know me, um, I don't do not a lot in there but yeah, of course it will, yeah. It already started today with a few texts and that, so, but yeah, of course, yeah. it's one of them things, you know, a bit of sledging here and there, you've got to do it. Well, it looks like he's going to enjoy it, and I'm, a few, I'm sure a few people down there are going to enjoy his arrival as well. Big match for Andy Jenkins, he's through if he wins, flash, Mark Dubridge will go through with him, and Gary Robson will go out. So without further ado, let's get the hometown hero on the stage, let's get Rocky on the hockey with our MC, Marco Mayer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back here at finals night for the Modus Super Series here in the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Please welcome the next two players to the stage. is Robbo, Gary Robson, and Rocky, Andy Jenkins. And so the hometown hero takes to the stage here at the Super Series. Andy Jenkins in front of his home crowd here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth in front of a vocal and loud support. He takes on Gary Robson, who was lost the first game of the evening. It's Mark Dubbridge by four legs to two. For Jenkins, it's a clean slate. He's on zero points. He's got that position in this group where he knows exactly what he's got to do to get through. Gary Robson plays one more game and afterwards he will be sitting in the practice room awaiting the result of Jenkins against Dubbridge. Jenkins, the former World Championship semi-finalist back in 2007. First in front of a it's huge going to crowd first here at the live lounge. On. And you get the sense Andy is right up for this tonight. Hey look, I've seen that wind up stuff before you start first hand when we played uh, during uh, COVID times. 41. And the, and the back chat between Andy and I was sometimes far better than the games we played, to be honest. It was far more entertaining for the guys who were uh, working backstage 81. that day. But uh, yeah, the crowd are here to see Andy do well. But you never want to back a northeaster into a corner, do you? Absolutely not. 125. It might feel like 150 against one, though, for Gary Robson tonight. In this particular matchup with Jenkins. 58. Robbo's already had a game, you know. Do you see that as an advantage? You've, you've got to turn things into a positive in these situations as a player and, and, and be mentally strong. And, and I'm sure that's the way that Robbo will feel. He'll feel that he's out of it now. He can throw three as a bird and probably the most relaxed darts he'll throw all week. 
He's going to have to throw some good darts because Andy Jenkins has come out the traps flying. And he gives it some to his local crowd, his local fans. 84. I'll tell you now, if he gets another one in, I'd love to see whether he went for the 180 to leave 130. double one. 130. Gary Uriqua, 170. Stranger things have happened with Jenks, I can assure you. And so 52 for an opening and you require leg break. 52. Been a while since we've actually seen a hold. Two 16s. And now double eight. 44. So Robson is Gary back for one four four. This should be some way to silence the masses. It would indeed have start on the treble twenty route, and he'll want another one of those. He's got it. Double twelve for a massive finish. One on the end twenty, and you require eight. You could have heard a pin drop in Pompey as that double twelve was attempted. Six. But you won't hear the wall for Rocky yet. Gary, you require but that's the of a home crowd. When he missed with that second dart, you could just hear it. It was about all the yeah, goals he's missed it. The first lap. It made him miss Gary his last as well. And eventually we see a hold of throw in this finals night. Gary Robson, 1-0 to the good against Andy Jenkins second here. It's, Andy it's the first second game of Group game 1. On. The first one saw Gary Robson in action against Mark Dubbridge. He lost out by four legs to two. 87. And it's actually the first hold of throw. Since Mark oh, Dubbridge went 3 1 up in the first match. Now here comes Robson with his 180s. 60. Now can you follow up, Gary? Sixty. Now I'm glad we got a high ceiling here at the live lounge because if Jenkins gets a nine data tonight, I think the roof would come off this place. One on the end. Yeah, 20, we have a balcony and a couple of other tiers above your stage that you can see there, which is uh, where Chris Murphy is doing uh, some of his his stuff from. And uh, yeah, th there is a definitely 60. a high ceiling here, and we would be able to scrape them off to uh, get them back to their seats. 40. However, despite all the talk and all the build up, Robson's just gone about his business efficiently and proficiently. One on the end, 40. And 40 leads him on 61 after 12. And turns the throw big time into his advantage. Jenkins really needs a treble now. 47. Gary, you require 61. He doesn't get it, so it's Rob over 61. One dart at tots, so two nil. 41. And you require 146. Unlucky. 46. I think had Andy hit that one, he'd have probably stayed 42. there to get one dart. Gary, you require 13, 20. It been lying well. But it's 20 for Robson to go two zip. Yeah, that's game short in the second lag. Gary Robson. And he does open up that two nil advantage on Andy Jenkins. Third leg, it's going to throw first. Of applause there, I have to say. How to silence a room very quickly. Go tune it up against Andy Jenkins at a dark venue in Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah, be tune it up against the hometown favourite. But I tell you what, if we were in the northeast, Andy Jenkins would have brought it back to him with that. 62. Heartbeat. Even a don in the Pompey blue. 3 in a bed with a maximum donning his Newcastle United colours and what a season they're having at the minute 99 Andy Jenkins with a Hampshire County darts most decorated players I think he's had the most man of the matches ever in Hampshire um, in those county games so uh, yeah love by all in Hampshire I've heard 100. Gary, you require 167. 
And you're, uh, I'm more than happy to talk about football because Pompey didn't play today, so... 83! Little draw for you. Cherries yeah. at Craven Cottage. Yeah, yeah. Big win for us last week against Leicester from behind. And, uh, yeah, here's Jenkins on now. On Going to require 84. Listen to that roar of approval. It may be academic because Robson returns for 84 for a 3 0 lead. Two 12s. He's hit it once already in leg one. 60. It's not to be this time. This 60. is a big game changer, this 60. Listen to the roar. Yeah, that's King Sean and the bird. Listen to the roar. It's Tuxton Limbs here at the live lounge. Andy Jenkins is on the board. Ford Laggett's Andy to throw first. He Keep breaks Robson fro Robson's throw just as importantly and has the darts here in the fourth. 58. 60 is not always an easy. You can always get one dart in the way. You're, you're, you're teetering away and not wanting to touch. 97. And, and, and get near the treble 20 and bust it. Sometimes you tend to try and throw it left a little bit and you can drift into the fives. There's lots of mistakes 96. that can happen. Especially when you're 2-0 down. When you're 2-0 when you're up, you just go bang, bang. Nobody thinks anything of it. But little things creep into your mind as a dart player. And those are those, what, those times. 78. And when you look at the entry of both players' darts into the board, they both stand up. They both have a little kink to it. So 100. it will stand up to attention. It can block the bed. I was once told by a very good dart coach that whatever angle the dart leaves your hand is some a similar 18. angle on the opposite end of how it enters the board. And uh, so this is this is a kind of, uh, you know, an inkling into how the dart leaves the hand and at what angle it leaves the hand because of its board entry angle. Whisper it quietly amongst the noise at the live lounge, but Andy Jenkins is working his way back into this match, leaving 149 after 12. 66. Looking to level up Andy from 2-2, two, two, from 2 nil down. And he's going to get six from this juncture. May only need the three. Two ni treble 19 for two 16s. Now move across to the 18s. And that is an excellent visit. Leaves himself on double eight. An absolutely super visit there from Jenkins. Just to show that he is back in a 140 here. 140. Really and does you pressure the 16. shot. Double four. Two twos. 14. And that's exactly what Gary Rodrigo you did. Require 14. He's done half the job in pressuring the shot. Now he's got three darts in hand. And you feel he has to take this. 14. No score. But he doesn't. And, and Mookie is in the madhouse. Yeah, that's good. No shot for the Jenkins. Line. And Andy he is back Jenkins. level. You feel now that Robbo's kind of let Andy back into Fifth the flag. game it's here. Going to throw first. That was a definite break opportunity. Although Jenkins got there first. And to be fair, Robbo shouldn't have got that at that double top. But he did. And once you do, 3-1, you'd have a very... Hard job to see Gary Robson not winning that game. But as it is, he's thrown everything now at Jenkins and he's still sat there at 2-2, which always gives Jenkins hope. Talking about doubles, those are the statistics. Two from nine and two from ten, respectively. Both have afforded each 59. other opportunities. And both, to be fair, have pressured the other out of the opportunity. So... I, I always say, yeah, it's great watching people have 100 averages against one another. It's mesmerizing. But games like this, this is what the game's all about. You don't know who's going to win at this point. One it could was really Gary Robson's favour after that. That's his third match of the match. 96. There's the scoring breakdown in this game. Five maximums inside it. But if Robson's going to go on to win, maybe the Tum 40 plus Connor could be a crucial one. Although Jenkins' consistency of Tum pluses has helped him back in the match. 
now it's Jenkins' turn to try and pressure that 66 of 65. Robson. Gary, you requires 66. And that's a very smart dart from Jenkins. Very smart. Yeah, that's, that's been a very smart the dart line. as well. And Gary Robson arrests the tungsten slide. He goes free to up and within a leg of victory, he has to win. Six Pretty much you feel from throw here. First, game on. Fifty-nine. Well, he will have to win because if Jenkins can get over the line, Robson would be eliminated because he'd be on zero points. Dubbridge and Jenkins would both be on two, and they both play each other in the last game. Robson can't do any more from this juncture. Absolutely, at three-two, you've really got to hit your score, find your scoring boots, and it's something that 46. Jenkins hasn't done in a leg that he must win. One hundred. Steady time for Robson. He's on two six one. Jenkins could do with a two trouble visit here. He might. One go on better. That's maximum number six of the match. Superb. The crowd love that. The hometown crowd. And here comes Robbo again. Really needing to stay 100. straight. One hundred. So it's Robson to a finish first, but it's going to be a big finish. 161, as you can see, the 180s shared three apiece. The game could be won by Gary Robson, or the legs could be shared three apiece. Jenkins is going to have 116 to do just that. 97, and you require 116. Good last there from Robson. I'd have been looking at the ball myself, but... Robbo's hit that, treble 19. It is, yeah. Double 18, I think that one's in. Yeah, that's King Shaw, the sixth line. Andy and Jenkins. we are going all the way. A 1-1-6 one, one, for Jenkins. You, we can actually feel Seven vibrations from the commentary box. That's how loud first. the war is. Game on. The floor is definitely rumbling in there. I thought somebody had just dropped a drum. 66. I would bring a drum into the live lounge, but you need your percussion. Whoa, and Jenkins is playing all the way here. That's his ball for the match. Seven between the pair, and that could be the most timely of the lot. Those 116s under pressure, when you 14. take them out, you then sort of progress, and the belief comes back in your head, and bang 180 to start but you've got to back that 180 up and now he's hit a treble 20. One on the end, 20 Jenks has definitely done that the momentum swing has gone with Andy Jenkins and it is full advantage 38. Jenkins now Rocky could end Robson's road here at the Super Series those 38s for Robson were 180 just 16. three minutes ago And so Jenkins has six and one three six to secure victory. And you require 136. He may even get nine from this juncture. He is red hot favourite for this now. The hometown boy. 60. Well, he needs a lot here, Robson. Doesn't get the lot. So Jenkins will get another six from 76. To get it done, to get it done, to eliminate Robson from the race. 76. 16. Tops. How much of a blocker is that first dart? 36. Just above the wire, although... He could have laid one up if he really wanted to. He may be under pressure now. There was definitely no pressure with that last throw. And sometimes it's better if you don't put pressure 40. on a shot like that. And you require 40. He's got it now. Now, now, now. 24. This could be interesting. Because Gary Gary requires 75. could pull off the ultimate tungsten highway robbery. It's 18. And he's going to get a, a double top for the match. This is huge. 45. 
and Robson knows. He was well out the leg. He had a dart to win it. And, and Jenkins returns for double eight to get over the line. Double four. Eight. And the wait goes on, and you can see the dejected faces of Gary Rocky's Uruguay fans. 30. Two fifteens for Robson. Two sixes. Game. To win Shot. the match. And, the match. and to keep Gary, Gary Robson's Robson. hopes alive. He was down and out of that final leg. Jenkins had dart after dart to win it, but he couldn't take advantage of the opportunity. And so Gary Robson's hopes of progression here at the Super Series stays alive. It is no victory for Rocky in front of his home fans in his opening outing. Gary Robson is a 4-3 winner against Andy Jenkins. We're going to get to the middle match of Group 2 after this short break. It's going to be a debut on the stage in front of fans for Chris Mason as he takes on Tony O'Shea. Hi there, welcome back to the Modus Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where the local boy 
Andy Jenkins has just suffered a bit of a gut-wrenching defeat to Gary Robson, a, a match that keeps Robson in the tournament. Both players missing bucket loads of doubles in the match, and most of them for the match, actually. Gary Robson, though, getting over the line and keeping his hopes alive ahead of that last match between Andy Jenkins and Mark Dudbridge. Jenkins now knows that he must get the better of Flash or he will be heading home. I mean, it's only a, a five-minute walk, but still, he'd like to hang around here a little bit longer. Well, now, attention turns back to Group 2, and Tony O'Shea is back in action after that bizarre bow earlier this evening against Richie Howson, where every single leg went against a throw, including this one, superb as it was, Tony O'Shea with a 1-2-4 checkout, and he went on to get the better of Housen in that one, another win for him, and he is through to the semi-finals, but we've got one of our own, so maybe there'll be a little bit of bias from the presentation party here at the Moda Super Series, because Chris Mason has made it through to finals night, a man who's stopped talking the talk and started walking the walk, but there is a little bit more talk from Mace because Phil Bars caught up with him earlier. Chris, this time last week, did you dream you'd be here on Saturday night? No, I didn't think so. I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd have my moments during the week, but ultimately I thought uh, the lack of actually sort of playing this amount of matches in a week would catch up with me, and ultimately Friday it did. So, um, yeah, a bit fortunate in the end. Yeah, Friday, the tank looked empty. How much have you used the rest last night and this morning to get ready for this evening? Yeah, I've literally just, just been back at the house, literally just chilling, winding down, doing as little as possible just to try and give myself a bit of a chance tonight. But it's a good feel tonight. Right, let's get the ace on the hockey, shall we? Doing the talking in this match will be Henry Deacon and Scott Mitchell. And getting the players onto the stage is our MC and referee, Marco Meyer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here at Finals Night at the Motors Super Series here at the Motors Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We're now going to bring the next players to the stage. It's Silverback Tony O'Shea against the Mason, Chris Mason. I know that you have things such as the Battle of the Bands. This is a battle of the commentators as Tony O'Shea takes on Chris Mason here in the middle match of Group 2. Macy Ace has been one of the star performers this week. There was plenty of anticipation about his debut here at the Super Series. And despite some really good performances in Group A, he found himself in fourth. First, they saw him in five from five, and that was ultimately what saw him progress through Group C yesterday. Tony O'Shea, he also entered the fold on Monday. He progressed his way through to Group B, where that was how he qualified for finals night here at the Live Lounge. So Chris Mason, who also this week was announced as part of the field for the World Seniors Championship, which takes place in February next year. It has been some darting renaissance. First lag, it's Tony the throw first, game on. The two commentators collide, and my fellow commentators had... Many a battle, especially with Tony O'Shea, Scott Mitchell. Yes, I have. You know, he's. Um, I've had to bow, don my cap to him many a time and go, do you know what? You were too good for me. And I managed to get him a couple of times that I remember. One of the own 40. Um, one of them was probably in the greatest starting week of my life. So, uh, yeah. No, we have a bond and we always have had. As I have with Mace, he used to be a Dorset player back in the day when, the, you know, back in the day when he had a ponytail and they were in trend. Um, you know, so I've got a great relationship with both these guys. One hundred and eighty. Now we've spoken this week about players' roots around this segment of the board, and eighty. Perhaps they're not being utilised in this group, but O'Shea going the right way there from three oh six. Is this a bonus night for 97. Chris Mason, I think probably the, there's been a pressure release. I mean, obviously, you guys here have been talking about it and and, and, and been really giving him the big GF all week. And 
Uh, you know, I think that for Mace, he 47, just needed to get here Chris Saturday night 84. to prove that he'd done the right thing by, by being there with the darts rather than being sat in here with the mic. 44. He was actually voted down to do this commentary shift. Obviously, he doesn't enjoy my company that much because he decided to make his way through to finals night. And he's got 127. Chris should decline 40. Two tens. Yeah, that's been shorter than the first one. Chris Mason. I forgot Tony O'Shea in another breakfast. Second lag, it's Chris to throw first. Tony O'Shea doesn't know what Game hold on. is tonight, does he? Ninety-two. More. Good, good pick up with the last there for Mason. We, we we talked about winning those legs and then starting well. It was looking like a mediocre start, but one hundred. Big trouble nineteen, and O'Shea has responded with that last trouble twenty as well. Those last dart ones, oh, they hurt when you're thinking you're going to get away with it. And I think the more Mason's played this week, the more that he's kind of found those pressure moments easier to come by. Monday and Tuesday, he won games big, but the tight ones tended to go against him. One on the own, 40. That comes from playing competitively more often. Yeah, definitely. You know, look, he's not wet behind the ears. He's played a lot of darts, but not recently. So these sort of things, the things that you 57. remember, you know, you forget more than you remember, you know, so it's, it's very difficult to start picking it up. And of course, everybody remembers where you left off. So they all think you're going to be, and I, and I think that's a problem with Phil Taylor and the seniors. I really do. You know, everybody, you know, he chose to leave when he did and everybody expects that to come back. And it's the same with somebody like Chris. And also because he talks about darts and he tells people what to do. You know, 97. Tony, Tony you're declining 161. You know, been saying. When you're in this seat, there's extra pressure on you, that is for certain. But he's lived up to the hype. 137. Chris, you require 160. He may give us a blockbuster finish on the 160, not on this occasion. So you may see a ninth consecutive break of throw in a game involving 60. Tony O'Shea. Tony, you require 24. Here we go, the double 12 for the yeah, leg. Yeah, that's game short than the second leg. Tony O'Shea. Not the first time we've said break and leg to Tony O'Shea to the, tonight. Third leg, it's Tony to throw first. Game on. You'd be hoping that there's going to be a hold here. It'll be the first time 45. tonight. 45. Mace's style is just 59. It's, it's just like it used to be. It's just how I remember. There's just it's less movement now than than when he was younger. He, he was younger and keener to get into it. And I think probably 54. With all the commentary experience he had and all that he knows now, I bet he wished he knew that when he was a regular. Even though he was playing great, I bet he knew. He wishes he knew then what he does. 100. Now. It's interesting when I when I've had the opportunity here at the Super Series to speak to the ex-players that we have here in the commentary box, how much they say they learn from just the experience of 60. being here and analysing everything like a, a fine tooth comb about the players on the show. And sometimes that can actually help with your game. It can do analysing somebody else. If you start analysing your own game and start watching your own games back on TV, you can absolutely fry your mind. And it's something that I've always tried to avoid to do. I remember getting it wrong when I've lost. 16. You don't need to tell me again, nor put myself through the agony of why it's going wrong. So I avoid it at all costs. Unless it's the 2015 Lakeside World Championship final, which I have watched a few times. 96. What happened in that match again? I think, I don't know. I think Martin struggled a bit or something. I don't know. I don't know whether I won it or whether he struggled. I still can't work that out, but I'm, I'm happy with the outcome and probably why I'm still here. 100. Chris, you require 146. I'm glad you are alongside me tonight, Scott. It's been great fun working alongside you. Mason, yeah, does have a little bit of a luxury of time here in this first 58. Leg. 88 after 15. O'Shea back at 182, but he can put a sizable gap into it here. 
Really needs a treble with this last visit. 51. Chris should require 88. The ball. 63. Tony, you require 131. Away. A millimetre away there for Mason. But he went for it because he feels that Tony's in form to take the 1 3 1. And now he's a millimetre away from where he needed to be. I'm sure he was going top stops if that was a treble 7. 34. Chris, you require 25. Mason returns to 25. Double eight. Yeah, that's came short than the bird two, line. One, Chris three, Mason. And it is yet another break of fur. That's number 10 now involving Tony O'Shea. Forward lock, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. And this would blow the group wide open if Mason can secure victory. O'Shea won the first game of this group against Richie Houghton in a deciding leg 4-3. to three. That was a game 57. that featured seven maximums. We've actually seen two games tonight that have featured seven maximums because the game before it, Robson, uh, the game before this one, Robson against Jenkins also featured the 97. same amount of 180s. This one goes in. Mason. One on the end, 40. To hold throw. O'Shea 100 behind, and that's a bit of a block of dart with the way that his dart sits up. 100. Tony's famous for using a reseal Union Jack flight, which went out of production a few years ago now. And with the BDO, we would travel, you know, across Europe and, 44. and places. And every shop, that every tournament that had a dart shop, he was trying to buy all these resealable flights up because you just don't see them anymore. 94. 100. Good solid ton there from Mace. But O'Shea has a two treble visit, has a good chance of turning this row around. Another one of those makes it very interesting. 100. Chris, you require 116. 92. Tony, you require 110. If this 10 doesn't go. 68 if it doesn't for Mason. But O'Shea, 90 left. Like 58. First start, Chris, you so require 68. And so Mason returns to 68 for a hold and a 3 1 lead. He's going to get a dart. It's a double top. 48. Just pulls it low. Tony, you require 52. So, O'Shea, where will he go? Will he go 20 or will he go 12? 20 it is, double 16. Yeah, that's game short and the fourth lag. Fourth Tony break. O'Shea. And the fourth break. We don't like to keep repeating ourselves here. We're just giving you the facts. And the fact is... Fifth lag, it's Tony the throw first. Break in a row. Game on. And Tony O'Shea seems to be wishing for breakfast evening. And that's exactly what he's got. Let's have a look at the checkouts here. 28. Tony O'Shea, two from two. Chris Mason two from five and in terms of the averages not much to separate them it's just dipped a little bit as a result of that 28 start for O'Shea. 45. Well ta rather than taking the momentum from the break which is what you see everywhere Tony's gone and hit 28 but lucky for him Mace didn't do anything 40. nasty to him but he hasn't he hasn't taken his second chance to get away with a decent score in this leg. 60. It's 11 heaven now against the darts. So <laughs> 11 legs in a row. He's broken, and that's the only legs he's won this evening. 83. He'll be hoping it's not a dirty dozen. He's got to hold at some point in this match because he had the darts in the opening leg. 85. Mace just a little wayward there with his first dart, which he, we haven't seen from him so far this evening, but these aren't wayward. One on the own, 40. 
it's on 40 of the match. These are the distribution of the scores. He's been proficient in the plus column, whereas you can see in Mason's scoring power pack a bit more of an even split. Indeed. 60. Now, big chance here for Mason to break once again. A double treble visit. We'll see him mighty fine. 100. And that's Tony Uliqua, 150. So it's O'Shea, 150. He'll start on the treble 20. He'll probably stay there. May go ball or down the bottom here. 33. Chris Uliqua, 140. Just a little messy. Talking about messy. 40. Sense that this Tony is a Uruguay, 117. Crucial passage in play now. It's double top. He gets a dart. 77. Chris Uruguay is 74. Lean into it slightly there, Tony. Now Mace, two darts at double 16. That's a superb treble 14. Can he match it with a superb double 42. 16? He couldn't get any closer. Tony, you require 40. To break the chain of breaks. For a hold of throw. Which for O'Shea? Yeah, tonight? that's game short in the like fifth round. Tony O'Shea. You're the most qualified person in the building to say that as well. Six like it's Chris to throw first. Yeah, hens don't game have teeth, on. mate. Yeah, you're right. Last time I went to the dentist, I thought I did. 131. You are cackling on there like an old mother hen. I will give you that. Welcome to the commentary team, Scott. 100. I won't say Murph told me to do that, but he did. It's, it's the way you do it. I've been listening all week. One hundred. Well, what that leg for O'Shea does ensure is that we're not going to get a nine dart shootout this evening or a freeway nine dart shootout. Eighty-five. That's great knowledge, there, mate. I do have me occasional uses. One hundred and forty. And now playing in a manner that he's hoping to hold his own throw as well and take 100. The three, three. Chris, you require 130. The little fish doesn't have to attack the finish, so it goes across for trouble 18. 58. And Mason taking the advice in play that he would have given from the commentary box. And a ton here from O'Shea, or a 140 pressure. 100. Back, 72. Pressure requires 72. 72. Both of those right on the top of the 16 wire. 32. And you see Tony, you require 116. On I only just hit the 16s, and that makes it very difficult to hit the tops. But O'Shea's got to stay there. That's a block of dart. The angle of his dart, that's 60. not good for him. Chris should require 40. To take us the distance once again in group two. Double 10. Fives. Oh, no score. No. And that could be the end of this particular Tony, you game for Chris 56. Mason. And so O'Shea wants 56 to put him into the semi-finals. 16. Chris should require 40. You don't need to give Mace a second chance. He may be rusty. Yeah, that's been shorter than a six slide. Not for Chris how Mason. To do it. And that's a big, big dart in the way this group they could shake. Seven up. and final arc. It's Tony to throw first. Game on. Sixty. Shay had to win that particular leg to ensure there'd be no nine dart shootout. Mason can still possibly ensure it if we go for free. 55. That is the situation in this particular group because three sets of four threes in the correct manner would mean that we would have a nine dart shootout. 
can't happen in group one because we've had a 4-2 and a 4-3. 95. And the more surprising thing there was like, Tony loves a break. And he had his chance there for two darts. They weren't a million miles away. 57. You call him the Kit Kat, he loves the break so much. Oh, indeed. 81. Now, this could be a scrap fest here from now on. This could be nip and tuck all the way down. It's the way that the leg started. One big score here could turn the leg on its head. And is it going to go to One Mason? One hundred and eighty. To perfection. Mache starts downstairs. The right thing to do. 45. Yeah, he stayed down there looking for 95 to leave the big fish, but he hasn't done that. Mace with the 180 has turned the throw, so 58. he effectively should be first to a double, but you can see he's, had, he's antagonized himself there by not hitting a treble when he really needed one. O'Shea desperately 100. needs one with that last start. Chris should he climb 151. Perfectly for that to do that on the treble 20. One dart at tops. Game to shot style. and the match. Chris Mason. Tony O'Shea by four legs of three in another seven leg thriller here at the Super Series. And Mace is still in the race to get through to Champions Week with an 82 and a half average, two maximums to his name, four from 13 on the doubles. And the highlight, the last three darts that you've seen, the 151 checkout, that was clutch from Chris Mason. And that could be the three darts that could change the whole destiny of his week. He is a 4 free victor against Tony O'Shea in some style. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, we're going to conclude Group 1 with Andy Jenkins and Mark Dubridge.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where we've got a couple of decisive darting duels on the way, because we've had four matches here so far tonight, and nobody is through to the semi-finals yet. That's after a win for Chris Mason against Tony O'Shea. Mason with the checkout of the night, that 1-5-1 you can see there in the right-hand column, winning the match for Chris Mason. Wonderful stuff from him to pip Tony O'Shea at the post. And Tony O'Shea had beaten Richie Housen 4-3 earlier in the evening. You know what that means, don't you? If Housen gets the better of Mason by that same 4-3 scoreline, then that group will go down to a nine-dart shootout. Well, from that group to the other one now, attention turns to the decisive match in Group 1, which is only happening because Andy Jenkins missed six match starts uh, that would have seen him get over the line against Gary Robson and would have taken him and Mark Dubridge through. Gary Robson stepping up and eventually kind of falling over the line to keep his hopes alive and to leave Rocky on the ropes. So what it means is that any win for Mark Dubridge would see Flash go through, of course, having beaten Robson earlier in the evening. Andy Jenkins must win the match. It's as simple as that for him. But a 4-0 or 4-1 win for Andy Jenkins would see Gary Robson go through with Rocky. So certainly quite a few things to think about. I'm sure the boys in the commentary box will explain it in more detail but it's time to see if rocky can indeed come back off the ropes over to henry and scott to talk you through it thank you very much murph yes plenty of equations in play here in group one of our evening for mark dubridge it's quite simple he just needs two legs in this particular matchup and he will qualify through to the semi-finals if he gets free he'll be the man at the top of the group which gives him the advantage of throw in the semi-finals Andy Jenkins needs any win to qualify, and if he can win 4-2 or better, he'll win the group. Gary Robson is hoping that Mark Dubridge wins or Andy Jenkins wins 4-1 or better, and there is no scenario where the man from the North East can win the group. So that is how it's laid out then for the final game of Group 1. We'll update you as proceedings go on. It's Dubridge against Jenkins, and as you can see, the fans have exited the bar all first large it's on Andy the stage, first all eyes game on. on the hometown favorite Andy Jenkins indeed these are the games where you cannot let the situation 16. take over mentally these are the games you've got to be mental mentally strong and the way that the game has evolved means that mind coaches are now coming into play with the sport as the more money gets 61. available and as you need to be mentally stronger, people are hiring those types of people to help them out. We've seen in similar sports 100. like snooker, Ronnie O'Sullivan adopt coaches and it's helped him towards success over recent years. And it is much more than just turning up on the day and trying to 93. win a match. It's so much of a mental side involved in this sport, which perhaps has been untapped for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got a mental coach in Steve McKibben out in Ireland, and um, he's always there when I need to call him. And, you know, if I have a, a doubt about anything, I talk to him and, uh, you know, and I, I did some work with him, obviously, before 2015 in, in the way of getting myself One through that first 14. round at Lakeside, because it was, it was just a mental block, and he managed that. And three years after he got me through the first one, we're in the final. One you know, hundred and twenty-one. So something to be said for it. And when you speak to those coaches, do you speak about the game itself or the areas around the game? Could be whatever's troubling your mind, really. I think. One hundred and twenty-three. And you declare one hundred and twenty-one. Because we hide it all. We try and hide it all when we're up there, and somebody can't help you. Eighty-one. If you're Mark, you require eighty-four. Dubbridge here, once 84 for the opening leg. There's no hiding place here. He's the away player. Yeah, it has been shown in the first line. But he takes Mark the opening Dutchbury. leg, and Andy Jenkins just goes straight back to the board, uh, straight back to the table after being broken. Second leg is marked to throw first. Game on. He knows he's in trouble here. Mark Dubbridge knows he needs one leg to go through. And an 84 with two darts in 93. that manner 
should give him confidence, it should settle him. Because as we've seen before, if you go out there just aiming for two legs, 83. sometimes you'll only get one. It's, you've got to aim to go and win the game and play your game. You've got to sh shorten it down and play one leg at a time, not think about getting to four. Never get ahead of yourself in this game. 100. If you win the match, you go through anyway. It's as, it's as simple as that. And sometimes if you put it as bluntly as that, that could be the best MO. 140. And we are going to see Dubbridge at the World Seniors Championship. In February, you can get your tickets for that, incidentally, for the Circus Tavern Affair at dartshop.tv. And I just wonder 41. what kind of threat he may be there. Well, I've just seen his stats. He's only 49. I thought the seniors were up to 50, so he must have a birthday between now and then. So, uh, yeah. And, and look, this scoring power that he has. 174. He starts added a few doubles to that first and second dart, like he just did the previous leg with that 84. You've 41. got to say Mark he's going to be a big contender 36. in that. Double 18 for 13 data. Yeah, that's game show in the second a flash. Mark he coach. only needed two legs in this game to qualify. He has got those Third two legs needed and to first. get himself game into on. the semi-finals. If he can get one more, he would top the group. He'd have the throw. In the semi-finals, it would be the first semi-final. So this is how it works then for the rest of the night. The top two in the groups go through, and then the semi-final to be as follows. It's the winner of Group 1, up against the one-up of Group 2. The winner one of Group 1 goes first. And the master machine that is marked up, which comes rolling into town again. And then to finish off the conversation, for as we really interrupted, the winner of Group 2 will play the runner-up of Group 1. Now then, Mark, what can we do from here? Start to think it when the first one goes in. I could have shown you. Road. Done many on the practice board, but never in a game. Keep missing the 24 on tournaments. 40. But that's something we don't have to worry about now. But Dubbridge still has a command and lead here. 2 2 1 plus these. The hometown hero looks in serious trouble here. And look at those averages. That shows you why he's in trouble. 104 and a half. 137. Dubbridge's best display of the week. I think we've answered our own question as to what kind of threat he could be at the seniors. 100. And Andy Jenkins is going to have to find... Something very rocky One like from here. 25. He's going to have to come back Mark up on the canvas. Because Dubbridge here has 78 for a 3-0 lead. So it's a 20 now for double top. He wants it out of the way. He will go for the right-hand side of the double yeah, top. Yeah, that's short in the third line. And that's exactly Mark what he Dutch did. Bridge. And that was clinical. You really didn't want to let Rocky have another go at what he had left because we saw Ford him like it's Martin from first in a Game very on. similar situation. They came to Pompey to pay homage to Andy Jenkins, but 100. Mark Dubbridge is vastly becoming the man to beat this evening. He was the man to beat in Group A. No one could topple him. 100. But is that a sign of hope for the hometown hero? The 180 on a pinhead, it has to be said. You could have fitted another six in there. 100. Fifty-nine. Would like to three-figure score there to back that 180 up. It's Dubbridge now. One hundred eighty. One hundred and forty. Mark one hundred and twenty-one. One two one. Got away with it there, Andy. Really needed to go for the 18 last start in case he hit a single, but he got away with it by hitting a treble and left him one, two, two. 
85, Up and he would require 122. Up left himself 36, which he's already hit in this match for a leg. And so he returns 90. for a 4-0 win, Mark which would 36. send Gary Robson through alongside Dubbridge. Game, lays shot, down the and the match, for the Mark rest Dubridge. of the field to follow. Mark Dubridge with one of the performances of the week, a 103.66 to send home the home favourite, Andy Jenkins. Two maximums in the match. Four out of seven on the doubles, an 84 high out. Andy Jenkins receives a rapturous round of applause from the home fans here in Portsmouth, but he departs the scene. Mark Dubbridge is through, as is Gary Robson. We're now going to round off group two after this short break. It's Chris Mason, it's Richie Housen, and every single scenario is still in play. Well, welcome back to the Moda Super Series. We are based in Portsmouth, and it is a pair of Portsmouth party poopers that are through to the semi-finals after Gary Robson and Mark Dubridge have seen off the hometown hero, Andy Jenkins. And it was emphatic from Mark Dubridge, wasn't it? A 4-0 success for Flash with his best performance of the week so far. And that's going some, because he's played some good stuff. You can see here 103.66 average 
for Mark Dubridge. I think we can have a look at the stats for that. Yep, there we go. Two 180s. Jenkins played well himself, but didn't get a single data double. It's a scoring only average that for, for Andy Jenkins because Flash was just too good. And he's looking like the man to beat now here on finals night, isn't he? Let's see how he's feeling. He's talking to Phil Bars. Mark, you've just looked at the stats there and there's a big smile on your face. That was very impressive. Yeah, I guess I made a statement there. Um, that's the most relaxed I've been all week. It was tough for a lot of reasons playing Andy because of our history and the, the all jumping around the stage and stuff. And I know he's playing really well. So um, an absolute massive win for me. That's massive. You're known as the party pooper now here in Portsmouth. But like you say, you've set the bar and you must feel really confident heading into that semi-final. Yeah, well, uh, again, we we don't know what we're going to get. You know, it's a it's an 85 average, it's a 93 average, it's, and now I've hit a, a big average, a decent average, you know, and I felt really calm. So, um, you know, let's let's see where it goes. It could it could all go wrong, or it could all go right. And um, but yeah, I'm feeling buzzing. I think is the word. You're gonna go back to the practice room and watch, obviously, because you don't know who you're gonna play yet. All on this game now. No, well, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, um. I was, I was kind of hoping Andy was going to win earlier against Robbo because that would have put me through. That lumped a whole lot of pressure on the game that I was playing in, me and Andy. And I guess I just coped with it pretty well. So, um, you know, what comes along, what player comes along, if I can be calm, be considered, I think I'm going to be difficult to beat. Mark Dabridge, congratulations. and look forward to seeing you in the semi-final. Thank you very much. So one Bristol boy through, another one looking to follow as Chris Mason gets back on the hockey now. Mace took out that fabulous 1-5-1 to win the match against Tony O'Shea in a, a dramatic last leg decider. Mason coming up with the checkout of the night and thrilling the fans here at the Super Series. But in this group, well, anything could happen. If Chris Mason wins, he knows he is through. But if it goes 4-3 to Richie House, and watch out, because we could get another three-way nine-dart shootout. Let's get the action underway and see how it all unravels. Over to Scott and Henry in commentary. Thank you very much, Chris. Every single scenario is in play in Group 2. And as you mentioned, the possibility of a nine-dart shootout. That would be some way to kick off your commentary career here at the Super Series, Scott? Absolutely. I mean, there's nothing more gripping than that. And, uh, you know, that would be nice if I was a lucky omen to get that, but the players won't thank me for that because I bet that's the last thing they want to be doing. It'll be drama for the crowd. Now, this is the scenario, as Chris mentioned a moment or so ago. Chris Mason will qualify with any victory and would send Tony O'Shea through with him. A win by Richie Housen, 4-0, 4-1 or 4-2 would eliminate Mason. And Housen would go through as the group winner. First lag, it's Chris is through first. Second. Game on. A Housen 4-3. The drama would have only had just begun. Well, it's one man from the West Country already through. Can his fellow Bristolian seal 26. the deal here? And he's going to have to find a little bit more than that. What a brilliant commentator's curse by myself there. Sorry, Mace. All my fault. 36. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Much more like it. One hundred and eighty. May have taken Housen with him. He sure looks like he has. Oh, no, no, no. oh my goodness me. One on the fourteen. I was gonna say if he got another max, shall we scrap the first scores and say he's on a nine? To be honest, that last start he looked more relaxed than when he threw the first two. You just thought, oh it's going in there. 100. Chris should require 155. He's got six here from 155 as Mason, so can think about his options. Six. 
60. Chris Shirikwa, 96. So we'll start at the top here. Chance of a 14 data, not now. He'll stay there. That's a lovely lie. Oh, that's unfortunate. He'll come down 56. to the 16s. Richie, you require 125. He gives Helson a chance at the 125. He will start on the bullseye. He's got the 25. It will be treble 20. He just misses it. 80. He'll probably stay One of there. And that's a Chris, you require 40. It piles the pressure on Chris Mason. He says in commentary, pressure is for tyres. Yeah, that's Grim Shaw, the first he's right after Chris all. Mason. Because that was as cool and composed a double ten as you may see all night. Second lag is Richard is through first. Game on. He just gave Halson a little glimmer of hope there. Halson looked out the corner of his eye and thought, I'm going to get back here. And the minute you think that as a player, seven. they drop in last start every time. It's got to be the worst feeling is they've missed two. And especially if they're two, they've gone the complete different ends of the bed and then they sneak one in with the last one on their own 40 <laughs> correct absolutely it's uh it's why i try not to watch those if i can help it 97 reminder that after this we'll have a short interlude between the semi-finals where we know that mark dubbridge and gary robson are through from group one mark dubbridge will Play in semi final number one, and by winning group one, will have the advantage of throw. Gary Watson will play in semi final two, he will be against the darts by being one up. So, if you win the group, you get the advantage of throw in the semi finals. The two winners of that, of course, will progress through to the final. And to ensure all fairness, there will be a bull up in the practice room. Ninety seven. So, nothing between them here and leg two. Richie will be looking one for another one of those. One of them, 25. And used the lie, lovely. He stacks a dart similar to Taylor, doesn't he? Because of the angle entry into the board. Discuss it a little bit more in, in the next leg, because the role of stack is in the game. I think it changed over recent years. Richie but Hansen here, 82. looking to level up, 82. Went for the ball. 79 remaining. So trouble 13 would have given him a dart at tops, and he wasn't too far away, in all fairness. 41. Chris, you require 104. 2 16s for a break of throw. 72. But the chance goes a begging for Mason. Richie, you require 41. As he lets out a groan when it left his hand. But it's 41. He's. Hit the 14, it's now double Yeah, that's been short than a second line. And he only needed Richie one Hansen. dart. Third one line gets Christopher all it first. Takes. Game on. And the possibilities are still all there in the group. But just going back to the housing and stacking, it's 60. I mean, you look at a lot of the modern players that come through you don't see many stackers these days do you really that that come bursting onto the scene there's a young one that i class as a stacker and that's uh one on the own 14. Young keen barry keen barry is a stacker he sets up in in that way and once he gets one in the right place he can hit them other two and that's why he's being such a success that one on the own 14. i just changed my horse's teeth there a success that he's been Played in the original icons of darts 41. here. He's back at home in 2020. Well, I say back at home. I think he spent a couple of weeks out in the Czech Republic or something like that for a time. Yeah, I think I remember he did. I think his, his lovely young lady, Barbara, uh, lives out One there. One of their own 40. Her family lives out there, so they go out there on holidays now and again for her to see her family. But, but going back to the stack and the way that Richie stacks, it's because he gives a lot of air. It's... One on their own 40. It's, it's, Chris, it's, you it's require 161. Stacker rather than a forceful stacker, if that makes any sense. And if it doesn't, well, I don't mind, because it does to me. It's a trajectory in the air, isn't it, more than anything else? 43. I think because of Phil's height, 
that's why he liked the stacker so that the one underneath he could still get over the one on the top wire was a real problem for him 100 chris you require 118. the most famous stacker of them all 98 left and most successful without doubt could this double 19 be a success 80. for mason richie you require 80. tops tops nah and he won't worry how high he is to the top because his dart would not worry him it's tops for the leg 40. chris you require 38. and now chris has decisions to make but he looks as if he's going straight yeah, for the double 19 and, and that's the right back. decision chris because Mason. he gets it first dart in hand and he leads by two legs to one forward lag is richard to throw first game on a little bit of side thinking as i said earlier about when you've got those numbers, a double 17, a double 15, just have a go at it. If you're going to split it anyway, you've got three darts in your hand. 55. You just as well have a good go at it and have a chance of winning the leg with your first dart. That's the way I see it. Obviously, Mace saw it that way in this occasion. And Mace, the ace, took out the 38. One on own 40. Two legs away from qualification. And he would send Tony O'Shea through with him. As Bobby, Jules, as Bobby Jules says, they're all the same size, son. The doubles are all the same size. Thirty. That's probably the best impression done on the comedy box this week, but I've got to be honest, the bar was set quite low. I ain't got the gold to back it up. Let's put it that way. One on the own forty. You've come in the Chris Mason shirt tonight, that's for sure. Hey, I'm every other dart player. I just, I just can't play like any of them. <laughs> One on their own 40. Had your moment. Yes, yeah, better to have lived than not, eh? One on their own well, 40. Well, Housen's been living the year of his darting life and getting himself through to champions so he could be Another tick off the 2022 Tungsten bucket list. 85, Richie, you require 66. So, he's gone ball, that leaves 41. Is he going one tops? He's going nine for 32. Yeah, that's game short than the fourth one. Clinical, line. Richie Clinical. Didn't even give Mace a sniff. And here we are back at parity. Fifth lag, it's Christopher Two first. Legs Game on. We're at the halfway stage of the match. A pivotal few legs in shoe. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape One on in this particular matchup. The averages are fairly similar. Mason averaging 94, House and 92 and a half, both with a maximum of Pete. And then on the outer ring, Two from six and 100. two from three, but admittedly, those two from six have kind of been in visits where he got the double in the end. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. Um, and those two look lovely to thunder. One hundred. Absolutely, they were, they were perfect for the third chart treble twenty. Gives himself a hundred and forty lead, and a good lead now of House and doesn't hit, and he doesn't. So Mason. In leg five is 80 ahead plus these. One on the end, 39. One, two, two for Mason to make it three, two. Housen's looking to apply the pressure on, but he's going to give Mason 99. six at this juncture to go three, two up. Yeah, six from here, so... Oh, 73. Only had to hit that 16 to leave a top shot, top of the hole finish. He has time. But a double treble visit here. 99. Chris, you require 49. He would not want to risk house and getting a go at this. So it's 17, it's double 16 for Mason. Yeah, that's game short in the fifth flag. Chris Mason. Convincingly hit with the first dart. More convincing than when he went Six for the like single 16. Richard's throw first. Just one throw Game earlier. On. 
It's funny how it works like that, isn't it? I mean, look at the averages here. This is a proper tungsten tear up here at the live seconds. lounge. Mid 90s averages, really good standard. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. One of the land, 30 plus averages at your county game in old money that everybody used to look at and go, whoa, what a game. One hundred. That's a great dart from Mason. Another one. One hundred and thirty-five. Oh, it will start. The janglers going for Housen. Oh no, it hasn't. It's just rattled his mojo. One hundred and twenty-one. Legs in the offing, but Mason's looking to make inroads. 80. Oh, that is desperately unlucky. I would say Housen has six from here, but we saw Mason take out a 151 to beat Tony O'Shea. 140. Chris, you require Superb. 152. That hurts when you've got that one drop out and then your opponent goes bang, 140. You start thinking, ooh. 58. My luck's not in this 44. 44 for Housen. Two 16s. Yeah, that's that getting short in the six And Richie so Housen. it is leg six of this group. The scenario is exciting. Seven ten for the lock. It's Chris is from first. Game on. If Housen can break cue the drama we haven't had a breaker throw in this game yet 41 I don't believe so that's not a good start from mace the ace housen's all over it 60 but really really doesn't put the dent in that he would want with mace only having started with 41 well, Tony O'Shea currently has six. the Stockport County Chris Mason half and half scarf out because he needs Mason to win this leg to send him through alongside him. 85. 85. The margins are tight in this old dame they call darts. No matter where you're playing 81. It, no matter whether it's up the pub, on a Monday night, a Daniel local club on a Wednesday, or even in Portsmouth, at the Super Series Live Lounge venue. 60. These odd legs are so important. 100. The tungsten tension continues to go up, but Mason is found the maximum. That could see him on his way through to the semi-finals. It would send O'Shea into the final four alongside 95. him. And they Chris could be the last 103. three darts. House and foes this week. 84 remaining. 64 remaining. 55. 48 points away from a place in the semi-finals. Housen really needs a big 16. treble here. Chris, you require he 48. So Mace should get two to win this match. Double 16. 32. But it doesn't go. Richie, you require 141. And Richie Housen needs this 141, not even to send himself through. It's for a nine dart shootout, but it isn't going to go. So Chris Mason wants double eight. 59 to go through to the semi-finals of the Super Series. Double four. No oh, score. No. Richie, you require Did 82. Did the moment get base? Did the moment get him? This is realistic chance here for Richie Housen. He hasn't missed double 16 when he's left it so far this match. He's always nailed it with two darts in his hand. 
Game shot and a match. Richie Houghton. Super Series history. We will have a nine dart shootout courtesy of Richie Houghton's 4 3 victory against Chris Mason. The tension just continues to go up here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Let's have a look at the match stats from here first. Houghton with an average of 89.3. Mason, 90 and a half. Two maxims to Mason's name, one to Housen. Four out of seven on the checkouts, 57%. It was three from 11 for Mason. And that is why we are going to the ultimate Tungsten Tenavio at the Super Series for only the second time in the competition's history. We will have a nine dart shootout to see who will go through from group two. It will be between Richie Housen, Tony O'Shea, and Chris Mason. And this is how the scenario works. All three players will be up on the stage together at the same time. They all get nine darts. The two highest scoring players will progress their way through to the semi-finals. The player with the lowest score will be eliminated from the Super Series in the cruelest, the harshest of circumstances. But here at the Super Series, it always comes down to the finest of margins. And so, for only the second time in the competition's history, we will have a freeway nine dart shootout. The happiest two people in the house about this will be Mark Dubbridge and Gary Robson. They will await who goes through from that nine dart shootout. Dubbridge will play in semi-final number one. Robson in semi-final number two. And so, let the drama begin if the nine dart shootout after this short break.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. There's been a slight delay here because we have got some darting drama ahead. Just sorting a, a few things out. The bull up for one for the second nine dart shootout between three players, all having four three victories in their group. Tony O'Shea, Chris Mason and Richie House and about to battle it out. The two players with the highest score will go through. I can tell you that Tony O'Shea won the bull and elected to go second. But without further ado, we will get the shootout underway over to Henry and Scott. Let the drama begin. There are three players on the stage. Only two can go through to the semi-finals here at the Super Series. And so for only the second time here, we have a nine-dart shootout to see who progresses. You now start to think, is Mr. Mason thinking I shouldn't be here? He cannot let that come into his head while he is here in the nine dart shootout. Now, interesting, Tony O'Shea was closest to the ball. Now, he's decided to go second. In the last nine dart shootout, we saw Andy Hamilton was the second player to throw, and he hit a 25 to know that he was going to go through against the player in the first position. That's all you need to do is two from three that go through. Rather than leave the pressure of being the last to throw. Yeah, clever idea. Again, that's what's in Tony's mind for this nine dart shootout. We've talked about what the mind will do to you in this game just a little bit earlier. And Tony has chosen to go second for that reason. I think he probably knows or remembers or heard or watched the last nine dart shootout and maybe thought that was the best place to be in. And I wonder what the psyche will be because Mason and Housen have been on the stage. And O'Shea and hasn't, but here we go. Chris, to throw first. Chris Mason will throw first in the nine dart shootout. The two highest scoring players will go through to the semi finals. The player with the lowest score will be eliminated. 41. And their chances of qualifying for Champions Week will come to an end. Eighty-five. Mason starts 41. O'Shea, 85. It is advantage silver back here. 60. It is advantage silver back, but nobody's really away. We're in that point where a couple of big trebles. Roy smile on Mason's face. Can he get the second one in? 81. Almost. And so he's on one, two, two after six. O'Shea 60. is in front of him. What can Housen do here as we approach the final round of throws? You feel just one treble is going to make the difference. 85. The first dart was good there from Housen. He looked to be the stacker that was going to drop in. As Mace has got all the pressure now. He's got to find a treble to go through surely 96 that is a big final dart for chris mason 60 and that 60 means that chris mason is through to the semi-finals richie housen needs 61 to get through 20 with the first dart 20 surely with the second. Bullseye now. Surely it's bullseye. 60. But he only gets a 60. And so after that, we're tied again. And so we still cannot split the players because Chris Mason's through. He can depart the stage. He's in the semi finals. Both players got three more darts. And so it's the players no now to throw will have first. three more darts. Now, O'Shea won the bullseye, so he gets the advantage. And it will be highest score from three extra darts that will go through to the semi finals. 60 of O'Shea. That is huge. 90. <laughs> this is... Uh, Richie House, the penny has just dropped with him to think that what he should have done. Then when O'Shea hit the treble 20, he was grimacing in the background. And that is it. 30. That Game is shot it. And, match. and so Tony O'Shea, O'Shea and Chris will Mason. join Chris Mason into the semi-finals. We went into overtime in the nine dart shootout. And it is Mason and O'Shea who go through. Richie Housen departs in the cruelest circumstances in history. 
Wow, yeah, what drama here at the Super Series. Once again, a nine-dart shootout, but that one was the most nail-biting. Last time we had a player going through on one point. This time, Richie Housen didn't think about going for the bullseye. Could have got ahead of Tony O'Shea, and he was made to pay. It's Mason and O'Shea that go through to join Dubbridge and Robson in the semi-finals, and we'll have them for you after the break.
Welcome back to the Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. That's Scott Mitchell alongside me. It has been a dramatic evening, hasn't it? Nothing was decided at all, right to the death. But then that nine dart shootout, what about Richie House and not going for the ball 25? Well, in his game to get to the nine dart shootout, he kind of rode his luck a little with Mace not quite doing the job. Mace was out the back, really upset, and then he has to go first then, and then qualifies first in the nine dart shootout. It goes from a nine dart shootout to a 12 dart shootout. I mean, it, it was exciting. It's already a format that the players don't play very often, isn't it? This very short format, round robin. But then throwing a three-way nine-dart shootout, I mean, it must be something that even players of their experience have never been through before. They haven't, and of course, there's no way that you will know how to deal with that pressure. It really is. I, I would imagine if you get to that position, you've just got to try and relax and throw three practice throws, because I think if you overcomplicate it and you overthink it, you're only then going to stop yourself. Yeah, semi-finals are set up. The first of them will be Mark Dubridge against Tony O'Shea. He's the one with the toughest turnaround, of course, tied on points in the nine-dart shootout, and then outscored Richie Housen, who I think the worst thing that happened, actually, for Housen was the penny drop, didn't it? You said it in commentary, and that might have affected his next throw. Well, I, I was looking at that 25, and it was the shot that he had to go for, but the penny didn't drop until he walked around and then realised because he was trying to shut the situation out. It's the natural thing to do. Try not let the situation grab you. You grab the situation. But he just made a minor mistake there, and maybe he would have been the one that gone through if he'd had that one dart, that 25. Happiest two people must be Gary Robson and Mark Dubridge, right? Sitting in the practice room, feet up, watching it. Absolutely. Probably having a little laugh about it between the two of them, going, uh, we haven't got to deal with this. <laughs> Yeah, so we do have the semi-finals. Mark Dubridge and Tony O'Shea's the first one. Um, Dubridge will be a favourite, but how does Tony deal with it now, having come off stage so recently from that drama to get back up for the semi-finals? I don't think anybody of Tony's magnitude will have a problem with that. I think that, you know, the excitement of that has been going and he'll want to get back up there now while he's still excited. And the new semi-final after this will be uh, Gary Robson against... Chris Mason, who was able to walk off stage and watch the end of that one. Um, a little note for you, Scott. Chris Mason is actually rotated to commentate next week. Are you busy next week? Uh, yeah, I think I am. <laughs> I think I'm at a pro tour next week, so I'm sorry, <laughs> folks, I won't be able to be here. Yeah, Mason could be through to Champions Week. That's what all the players are playing for now, the £5,000 first prize and the right to play at Champions Week. Come on then, Scott, four people left. Give us your prediction and your reasoning for it. Do you know... My heart says Dubridge because of the, just the whole way that he's been scoring. And tonight, he's matched that with those doubles. That 103 average was a big thing to frighten the other players. Um, Head says, maybe O'Shea could turn him over here with the momentum of what's just happened to him. And he's on a high. I don't know. It's Look, I couldn't pick it when it was six. I still can't pick it when it's four. He's kind of given a prediction there. We'll let him off. It's his first night here in the Super Series, and what a night it has been. And it is time for the semi-finals to get underway. It couldn't get any more dramatic, could it? Well, let's find out. Mark Dubridge and Tony O'Shea about to take to the stage over to our MC, Marco Meyer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's semi-finals time here at the Modus Super Series, here at the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Please welcome both players to the stage for the first semi-final. It's Flash, Mark Dudbridge and Silverback, Tony O'Shea. If you think the darting drama is over, well, it may have only just begun following that magnificent nine dart shootout that went into overtime, a group that could have not been split any finer. We enter the semi-final stages here at the Modus Super Series. Mark Dubridge and Tony O'Shea take part in semi-final number one. O'Shea here having finished second in a tie break to the tie break if that makes sense and then chris mason who won the nine dart shootout thus becoming the winner of group two takes on gary robson in semi-final number two and i just wonder scott that the players in group one would have watched backstage and it'd be even more important in gary robson's game against chris mason 
This has been a long gap now between games, a gap perhaps they didn't expect. What do you think they would have done over that period to get themselves ready? For me, I'd have been there on the practice board, actually. I'd have, I'd have watched the nine dart shootout. I'd have, I'd have uh, finished... I would have finished with that and um, then probably jumped back on the board. Although it's been a time, these guys are used to that. You know, normal tournaments, would you'd have a gap. And as the days go on, the games get closer and closer together. But I would have been on the practice board and, and making sure that I'd prepared right. I'd made the semi-finals. That would have been my chance at the start of the day. And, uh, yeah, that's where I'd have gone. I think we're just waiting for something technical. So... Uh, let's have a little bit of a chat then about what we have seen this evening. Let's just go back to that nine dart shooter. Well, I'm actually telling a lie because it wasn't a nine dart shooter. It, it turned out to be a, a 12 dart shooter. And I don't know whether actually in, in history, I mean, I'm thinking off the top of my head, I'm sure there'll be some statistician somewhere that could probably cut over hypothesis whether a nine dart shootout has ever in history gone to overtime. If so, then my word, I'd love to see that on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, it didn't need to had had Richie House and have realized, I think he was trying to shut the situation out, do what he was doing, trying to stay straight. And then he realized you could see when he walked around the back and Penny had dropped and he had to go again. And of course, then Tony hit a treble 20 first start and really dashed his hopes. Well, Scott, how have you enjoyed your first night here in the country box at the Super Series? You look as if you're very much at home, a part of the team. Yeah, well, most of the people here I do know, or we've worked together before. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not that short in the tooth. I'm, I'm quite old now. I'm getting long in the tooth. So lots of people I've met in darts, and I've really enjoyed it. And if I could bring the luck of a nine dart shoot out for the fans every time I come, um, you know, I'm going to get invited a lot more often, aren't I, for the excitement? It's been an absolute pleasure to work alongside you this evening. Hopefully it won't be for the last time. But I just wonder now what Chris Mason be feeling, because he's been on a real helter-skelter of emotions really hasn't he he's had the low of losing that game to Richie Howson then he's had to mentally get himself ready again for the nine dart shootout first luck and then he's Morrison managed to first get Demon. himself through the nine dart shootout as we get the first semi-final underway well I would imagine he's the one that would have enjoyed the break to have the emotions of being high 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 of, of 57 of, you know getting through that and now he'll be back there trying to calm himself down. And if he could have chosen any one of the opponents in this semi-final, he would 45. have probably chose Gary, in all honesty. Now it's interesting because the last time we had a nine-dart shootout, it was in Group 1. So they had to finish Group 2 and then come back on the stage. So the winner actually had a bit of a disadvantage by coming straight back on. 57. This time, Chris does have that little bit of a break. He can go back and recompose, which kind of flips the question back on to... Tony, what will he be thinking, knowing that he's had to watch all of this unfold, then come on stage, 16. go through the bizarreness and the madness of the nine dart shootout, plus the three extra darts, and then come off and recompose himself again? Yeah, there's definitely an advantage of being semi number one now. Um, there's no two ways about it. 54. Because the winner of semi number two will be straight back on. Uh, but, you know, the group stage is now gone. This is a straight shootout now. This is a seven leg shootout rather than a nine dart nine shootout 40. and uh you know everything that's gone before is gone now whether they beat one another it only matters now someone is two games away from winning five thousand pounds and securing 96. the last place in champions week which begins in earnest on monday morning more about that later on in the program 100 someone in the space of seven days could from this group potentially win 25k <laughs> very true one of these four guys but i know there's probably another few out there going now nah, i've been practicing for 99. this for a few weeks now I'm tony ready you to require go. 156. is tony ready to go from the get-go 156 for the opening leg 78 mark you require 138 and i reckon just because of the sheer madness and I know that I've got an adrenaline rush just here in the commentary box. And I imagine even Dubbridge watching this on the side is probably up and down, up and down in the emotions. Maybe we're just seeing a Tony, you require more 78. pedestrian pace first leg as a consequence of that. 20 for Toxo shape. No oh score. My, he's busted. He wanted a few more of those 60s in the nine dart shooter. He wouldn't have needed extra time Mark there. Mark, you require 111. Remarkable mistake. 
one you don't expect to see from such an experienced player. So 91 remaining. Treble 17 would have. That's a dart at top. Treble 14 is the route. So Shea won 78 to give us the lead in the opening leg of the match. 77 remaining. So 57. No decided to go. 45. 46. Mark, you require 60. A real let off for Dudbridge there. And he's been hitting these with proficiency. 20. So it's only you require 32. It's a different game. This is where the nerves come in. Yeah, that's but Tony Sean O'Shea the first doesn't feel nerves. Tony he O'Shea. takes the opening leg. He leads Mark Dudbridge by a leg to nil here in this opening semi-final. Second and it's leg again, is Tony the Tony first. O'Shea break. Game on. We shouldn't own it, shouldn't we? One Perfect start for O'Shea. A maximum two. start for O'Shea. Has he just rattled the fire? One oh, and it seems that he has. Two. They're following each other on here. 59. Little lurch there with that first start. Saw it pulled into the one, but rescues it with that last very important treble 20. Now, second dart, he should have moved 40. across there, Tony. He's himself on the Richie Beno score. 2 2 2. 100. Advantage up, Rich, but depends what happens with this last dart. 100. Mark, you require 140. So he will stay at the top. He will stay there. That's a lovely marker to hit the treble 20. Now he's got to avoid busting. So he goes to the side and he'll be 120. heading... 120. Well, Tony Unicorn, 122. But he, has, he hasn't bust. He's left himself a double. A shake can only leave the ball. 90. That was Mark Unicorn, 20. There from O'Shea. Important. But here we go. It's break time again. But Dubbridge... At the board. Double five. Yeah, it has came short than the second lag. Mark Dutbridge. And so it's yet another break in a game involving Tony O'Shea. We're level at one apiece in the opening semi final. These two lag, can't be Mark priced apart first. after two legs. One hundred and forty. Start from Dubridge, backing up his break of throw. Our resident spotter here, Owen Binks, who's One done a brilliant job this week. As Tony O'Shea does a brilliant job of piling in his second max of the match and second time at the start of legs as well. But Owen was saying that in the little break that we had between 39. the pool matches and the semi-finals, whilst you were up on the balcony with Chris, he was having a chat with Richie and. We were discussing in comms during the nine dart shootout about the 16. possible switch to the 25. Well, he thought, well, the 25 is a small target area. If he missed at any segment of the board, he'd be eliminated. So he decided to stay up on the 20s in the hope that he'd get himself a treble. And that'd be enough to, to get him. And 16. of course, the single 20, which is a bit more of a guarantee than when you're going for the 25 and you go outside, would mean we'd have a draw and a subsequent further three darts. Yeah, catch-22 situation. I see 14. what you're saying, but uh, you, they've done a lot. They've thrown a lot of darts tonight. You, you, you want to back yourself, and if you were going to go out, I'd rather... No guts, no glory, I think they used to say. Showbiz Scott. 84. Yeah, I always say that, but I'm the one that's so, you know, laid... I, I, the most dangerous thing I do is walk around with my shoelaces undone. Never take another risk more than that. Is that why you're wearing Velcro 100. tonight? Absolutely, the best Velcro you can buy as well. And O'Shea is on the cusp of yet another break. 
Very much so now after that slip from Dubbridge. Move downstairs, Tony gets himself a crucial last. Trouble into the 19s, and so 1-2-1. One, one. Surely he's got to go the 11 route. He has bullseye for O'Shea. Yeah, that's game oh, shot on the third line. Bang, Tony O'Shea. A 1-2-1. One, one. And yeah, guess what? It's another break. Forward lag, it's Tony the throw first. Game on. Yet another key and crucial finish for O'Shea as well. His timing in park tonight has been absolutely impeccable. 24. It's like he's asking himself to get himself out of the mire. And he is one of those that has always done that and had a career based upon that. 177. And we've just seen him have a poor start and allow Dubbridge to come straight back in. And now here we go. One hundred. That is a response. That's his third of the match. But we might be seeing more for Mark. Plenty more for Mark. One hundred and forty. You could add a nine dart shootout and a nine in your opening night on commentary, Scott. <laughs> well done, yeah. Fifty-nine. Honestly, they start calling me Lucky Scott then, but I just can't be lucky for myself. Ninety-two. This is a very determined Dubbridge who has said, well, you've broke me. I'm coming straight back at you, mate. 90. Mark, you require 92. Good ball management there from O'Shea. 72. Will he go the 12 route? Oh, no, he stayed there. 39. Two mines. Tony, you require 148. The door ajar. And it's just been blown straight back shut. 44. The door is open Mark for Dubbridge 53. to bring his back level at two apiece. You can't prize these two apart in many. 49. And now not sure any metric possible. Mark Dubbridge. It's a fourth break. And it's a best of three now. For the first Fifth spot flag, it's marked the throw in first. tonight's Game final. On. One player now is six legs away from £5,000 and Champions League potentially. Oh, very good with your counting. I don't know how you do that. 140. Please don't say that too loud. <laughs> yeah. It's One on the end, 14. <coughs> 9. And no, I will not ref. I'll leave that to the experts like Owen and Charlie and Marco. 97. All the super counters. All the super counters. How they do it is amazing. Forty-two. So, a chance for O'Shea to turn the throw. He really needs a treble. Forty. And it eludes him. So although he's 40 in front, it's not a big advantage. 58. Once again... Dubbridge has gone for the 18 at the wrong point. He needed to do that with the second dart. 38. And so it opens the door for Dubbridge to get the first hold of throw of this first semi final. And this could be a huge visit at a huge time. 100. That could change the tungsten tide. That first dart is plum for O'Shea. 82. Mark, you require 104. Move, that one, I thought he just stood where he, he was and, and thundered into that, but it's 104 apiece. It's a 104 shootout now. 
Double top for Dubbridge. 64. Tony Uruguay, 104. High, wide and handsome, that one from Dubbridge. So it's O'Shea now. Where's he going? Is he going the same way? No, double 16. Yeah, that's game shot in the fifth flag. And Tony O'Shea. And another top plus checkout at a crucial time for Tony O'Shea. His timing on the doubles. Six flag, it's Tony the throw can first. Can only be commended. Came on. At times it's been faultless. Well, it is faultless. Have a look at the double stats. Three from three for O'Shea. 95. One away from the £5,000 game. Well, that means 43. he would have to hold his throw, Henry. And at the moment, once again in this match, he is the break-back king. Well, the good news for Tony is he can actually 81. break in the last. Well, there is that. But in this situation, I'd still fancy myself throwing first. Well, if Dubbridge comes up driver the last 60. dart, it is advantage O'Shea with the darts. Yeah. He's 73 ahead, plus these. 60. Could do with another one of them. Gets another one of them. And now the bed is full oh, and brimming no. and waiting for maximum. Do not put your kettles on, ladies and gentlemen. 57. You need to stay for the end of this. And suddenly, Dubbridge has wrestled this leg back in his favour. But as soon as he may have 44. had the door open to him, he may have closed it back up again because Tony O'Shea is 208 points away from the Super Series Week 12 final. Dubbridge had a couple of flyers 32. in his last visit and now Silverback. Not to be outdone, had a couple of flyers himself there. Fifty-four. He's himself on Shanghai. O'Shea would love a one forty right about now. It's just a little rush that second dart. Sixty-seven. And once again, he's gone the full route and Mark to require one hundred and twenty. He will stay there just alongside for the Shanghai shot. It's not there now. He will try and get 60. a ton. Tony Uruguay, 109. So it's another ton plus left for Tony. Triple 19 would have given him a dart at double 16 for the final. 43. So Dubbridge has 60 Mark to Uruguay take us 60. to the decider. So he was high with the first. It's double 10 now. Is he going for double, double? Yeah, that's game shot and a six flag. And look Mark how important Dubbridge. that was to him. He's that. Sometimes it's a sign of relief that you're still in it because at that there were points in that leg where it never looked like Mark was going to get to a double. final arc. It's Mark to throw first. Game on. And so both players' weeks are on the line right here, right now. They would have set off on their respective journeys on Monday morning. Hoping to be in the big money one match. And one. Both of them are 501 points away from doing so. Well, Dubbridge now 400. 55. And O'Shea has given the advantage to Flash. O'Shea had a treble visit, but it wasn't the visit that he was looking for or the treble. And now 36. Dubbridge has chucked up there a bag of nails and been a bit scrappy. And the door is open once again for O'Shea. 60. But the harder you try, the smaller that treble 20 becomes. You can sense the nerves. It is palpable, not just on the stage, but now within the crowd. A hush to, uh, descends upon the live lounge. 80. Every treble. 
is worth a weight of gold in this particular scenario. O'Shea needs one 100. now, gets one now, and you just cannot prize these two apart. It's like taking your snags out of the freezer in the summer for the barbecue. Sometimes 16. you just cannot separate them. Sixteen. And that could be the visit that lets Dubbridge in, that opens the door, gives him the chance to put him within reach of the final. However, that is the worst possible 25. visit at the worst possible time. There was definitely a bit of shoulder in two of those darts. O'Shea will have composed himself now. So come on, boy. He's letting you in. Looks like he's going to go for the 18. 100. No, he didn't. He stayed up. So 126 will mean he only needs to hit one treble. While Dubridge is back on 199. He will stay down, I would have thought. 96. Tony, you require 126. So O'Shea, first to a finish. First to get a chance on 126. So Dubbridge now. 86. On 103. Mark, you require 103. It's going to have to go with O'Shea back on tops. How massive will that treble 16 be for Tony O'Shea? So it's treble 17 to save his... It's double 16 for the match. 87. A whiff of a wire away. Tony, you and O'Shea returns 40. for tops. Game. And the silver back and the match. is in to the final. He is one game away from qualification for Champions Week. Mark Dubbridge had one dart at double 16 to get there himself. But those two ton plus checkouts for O'Shea swung the tungsten tide. His timing at times was absolutely impeccable. And so Tony O'Shea is the first man through to the final tonight. We are now going to find out who he will face for the £5,000 top prize. It's Chris Mason against Gary Robson after this short break.
Well, what a night it's been here at the Super Series. This is the place to come, isn't it, for tight, tense tungsten tussles. And most of them have involved Tony O'Shea, who's just booked his place in the final. A 4-3 win against Mark Dubridge. Brilliant checking out from Tony O'Shea. That's the reason why he's there. Uh, 80% on the doubles. A 1-2-1 check out in there as well. But Flash did have that chance to win the match, didn't he? A missed start at double himself. What an evening, though, it has been for Tony O'Shea. He's been involved in three matches that have gone the distance, 4-3 in legs. He was then in a nine-dart shootout. That went to extra time because it was a dead heat. And now he's in the final. An incredible night so far. Let's hear from him. Tony, what a roller coaster of a night it's been so far. Every game gone the distance, a nine dart shooter, and now you're in the final. What are the emotions like right now? Um, just, just tired, really. I, again, I think there was too much respect there with me and Mark. I mean, we've known each other forever, and I think we gave each other too much respect. There was a bit of snatching going on, but I managed to snatch a few doubles in when it mattered, and, and that's, that was the only difference, really. The nine dart shootout, have you ever experienced anything like it? And for those that don't know, what's it like up there on the stage in that situation? Well, to be honest, you, you're sort of in a no-lose situation because if you do go out, it's because, you know, you've done all right. Uh, but um, I shook Chris's hand when he, he finished that because I thought that was it. I, I forgot there was another another three darts to play, so it was a bit of a reach out there. And, and I got a bit of luck there, and sometimes you need a bit of luck. And uh, I've not thrown well tonight, but, you know, I keep fighting spirit and you never know, do you? One game to go. How are you feeling? Exactly as I did on Monday. Nervous, scared, a bit frightened, but I'm here and I've got a chance, so who knows? Tony, congratulations. Cheers, mate. Well, we're enjoying it, Tony, even if you're not, but it's going to be a fantastic final. First of all, the second semi-final to get out of the way and see who takes on Tony O'Shea in that final. He's talked about scrapping. Gary Robson, his good mate, has been scrapping all week, hasn't he? But Macy Ace, the big story of the Super Series this week, putting down the microphone and picking up the darts for the first time in over a decade in competitive televised action. And he's now one match away from booking his place in Champions Week and needing us to look for another commentator. Can he do it? Can he get to the final? Let's find out, shall we? He takes on Gary Robson and Marco Meyer is ready to get the semi-finalists on the stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's semi-final time here at the Motors Super Series, here at the Motors Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Please welcome two players to the stage. First of all, Maze the Ace, Chris Mason, and Robbo, Gary Robson. Well, I don't know when to play this, but this is turning out to be one of the all-time great Super Series stories. Chris Mason, who was actually meant to be sat next to me this evening, finds himself in the second semi-final against Gary Robson and finds himself two games away from qualifying for Champions Week where he was meant to be sitting next to me. And you find somebody of similar age, not a similar size, and in a Mason shirt. So I did my best to replicate Mace. Um, yeah, the body structure just let me down a bit. Oh, Gary Robson, the T-sider, former World Trophy champion, stands first in his way Chris to throw of first. the final. Now, Game on. we mentioned in the first semi-final about Dubbridge having a long time between matches. Well, Gary Robson, it's been seemingly forever since he's been up on the hockey. 100. He didn't play, or he hasn't thrown a dart since game three this evening. That was around about 85. quarter past, half past 11. So it's nearly two hours between matches. He's an experienced man, he'll deal with that. You know, it's uh, 58. a dark player's life. Sometimes you get the rub of the green and sometimes you don't. And uh, we used to talk about semi-finals at Lakeside. It was always better to be in the first semi-final in the afternoon on the Saturday because you had all Saturday afternoon or evening to rest while your opponent was playing in the evening. Um, so you could, you, could, you could tie it up and, and, and do it how you want. You can always make a negative or something if you need to. But I think Robbo will be positive about this. He'll take it as a rest. 
and uh, but only time will tell. And um, how he throws the darts will tell us that. Do you ever play in a first semi-final, Scott? Yeah, just the once. I was in bed, one on one I was in bed by the time the second semi-final. Apparently, one of the best semi-finals in Lakeside history. I didn't have a clue. Not a clue about it. I was in bed. One hundred and twenty-nine. Chris should require one hundred and six. Just got a text from a brother because my phone had been off all day because it was going crazy and uh, yeah. A text from a brother to my wife. Fifty-eight. Gary you require seventy-two. Word. Adams. So Gary Robson here wants seventy-two for the first leg. One dart at tops for the break against Mason. Fifty-two. But that first Chris dart require forty-eight. Was a blocker. The third one clattered into it. Mason wants 48. He now wants 32. Yeah, that's and now he wants nothing the because the first leg's in his Chris leisure. Mason. Robson's had a dart. Mason only needed a dart. Second leg, it's going to throw first. Game on. It's first blood, Mason holds his throw. Robson's darts have changed slightly since I last saw him play. And I asked him about it earlier in the practice room, and he, they were the grip that he had on his darts that I used to see him play with him when I was obviously playing against him on a weekly basis 16. had more grip on them. And he said it started to wear a hard spot on his fingers with the way that he throws, and that started to affect his throw. So he's gone to a dart with one on a slightly smoother grip. And you have to say, being in the final of this week with the 12 talented players, or the semi-final of the 12 talented players we had this week. He's obviously made the right move to, to swap the darts. 59. Well, there's only one previous head-to-head -head meeting between these two. And this is quite a crucial 40. one because this came in the World Masters where Chris Mason won by two sets to nil in the last 64, which back in the day was the stage before you qualified for the TV. One of the end, Live 20, here on Sporty Stuff TV. 21 years later. And those were best of three sets as well, not best of fives with the 100. World Masters. Robo must have been a young man back then. One on the end, two. Scary Unicorn, 121. To lead the one five seven. Great use of the board. Eighty one. Chris should require one hundred and fifty seven. Shots are easy to see when you're watching, but they're not easy to pick up when you're actually throwing. It's amazing what you can see sat in these chairs. Gary now, Robson couldn't 14. see much of tops in the first leg. Now. He goes down yeah, for double that's 10, sure gets double 10, line. and we are back level at one apiece in this second semi-final, and it has been an evening full of tight tucks and tension. Bird it continues here, first. and in fact, Game actually, on. all evening, we've only had two games that haven't gone for free. That was the first game between Dubbridge and Robson, Dubbridge won 4-2, and then Dubbridge against Jenkins, in which Dubbridge won 4-0. Every other game has gone the distance this evening, you just cannot separate these six players. Topsy turvy. One hundred is the word I would use on the way that the games have gone. I thought that the time of night would be taking its toll. One hundred and eighty. Chris Mason is making a march. He is trying to light up the blue touch paper. But Gary Robson One fires in his emphatic response. He's averaging a shade under a ton here. How often have we seen that tonight? Somebody hits a 180 and it's rattled the opponent's cage and they come straight back with one. Eighty-five. He won't be too happy with the last dice. It's left on 136, but there was definitely room for more in that bed. And so Mason then on 195. Hey. 
Had options there, decided to stay up Gary stairs. Gary Uruguay on 136. Needs himself on 154, so Robson back for 136. And that's a good start for 136. Oh, double eight. Yeah, that's game shot and a third line. What Gary a shot. Robson. That is under pressure for a break. And the nod of approval from Chris Mason as Forward well. Forward line gets Gary to throw first. Game Class on. under pressure. And Robson has his support in the crowd. And they are warming on every single dart from this point onwards. 121. And with shots like that comes the confidence on your next visit. 85. Saviour. Treble 20 there from Mace. 41. The wrist there from Robbo in that first dart. Bit of tension. When the first dart hits the bed like that, it's usually a nice lie. 125. It says, come and get me, doesn't it? That first dart, it says, come and get me. 97. It's like an ice cream on a hot summer's day. You know you shouldn't, but you just want it, don't you? Well, yeah. 45. Especially if you're diabetic, you really shouldn't. <laughs> Maybe not on a night like tonight. It's a little bit nippy here on the south coast. 59. Of course, a very warm welcome to everyone joining us around the world. Not just in the UK, everyone watching great One darts on Chris Mason like that. Night. Joining us from Australia, America, continental Europe. And they may be about to see Chris Mason 18. level us up at two Chris apiece. 66. 66 is what he wants after 12 darts. For a break of throw to break Robson back and to level this match up. One dart, a double top. 26. Doesn't go. Robson Gary returns to 103, 103, having just pinned the 136. Has to start downstairs. 86. Double 16 now. Is Robbo going? 87. Oh, he had a chance, didn't he? Chris he had a little sniff. 40. Double 10. Yeah, Don't that's Mason game shot in the board line. Another opportunity. Chris Mason. And just like in the first semi final, we are going to go into the Fifth long legs. Is Chris to throw it's first. a best of three for the game final. On. Nobody giving an inch. This is what I love about darts. 96. It doesn't have to be those 100 averages to be an interesting game. It's just got to be nip and tuck and keep you on the edge of your seat. That's the love of this game. 100. Nothing to separate them in the checkouts column. Both two from five. And both, despite that one, three, six, from 80. Bobson, both have had to time their checkouts as well in patches. One hundred. Tried to blast his way through there. But the ton. It's yet again a good score from Robson. One hundred and twenty. Superb recovery from Mason there after that one with the first dart. One hundred. Advantage Mason in the fifth. Six on two of four to open up a 3-2 lead. He just will not go away, Mason, will he? One hundred eighty. His third 180 of the match, and how crucial is that going to be in the outcome? It's left him 96. on double 12 after 12. 24.
112. But it doesn't go. Robson gets Gary a chance to break. 105. I won't do another Bobby George impression about scoring and doubles. Double top for Robson. 85. He too misses narrowly. Chris should require 12. And because of the miss inside, it's double six for Mason. Two frees. Yeah, that's Huge been shown in the Chris fifth Mason. Flag. Chris Mason. And incredibly, he is one leg away from the Super Series final. A man who in this commentary Six box over the last few the weeks first. was writing off Game his on. chances in this competition is one leg away from the £5,000 game. 60. So, that was massive, that double three. Still had two darts in hand. That You tend to go tentatively at it. Mace the ace 60. went at it. Full bore. And he... Got the rewards that that deserved. One hundred. Robson will rue that dart at tops if he loses this match. But these are the fine lines. This is what happens in every game of darts up and down the country, up and down the world. Monday 57. Night, Wednesday night, Friday night or county. These are the fine margins that every dart player has to learn to accept. Can you feel the tension? 134. That's a huge visit for Robson. A two treble visit, any juncture from here on in is absolutely vital. 60. And Mace goes troubleless. Right at the wrong time for him. But he'll be thinking, I've got the throw. 140. So Robson is potentially two darts away from setting us the distance in this second semi-final. 100. Gary, you require 67. 67. He just doesn't go away, Robson, does he? So 67 now. Will he go 18 for 32? Yes, he does. And here comes 32. 35. It's the width of a wire away. Mason has to par the pressure on. Just has a quick look across at his score. He'll stay there. One on the land, 34. What a big visit. 32. It's Robson favourite with 32. Yeah, that's game short in the sixth leg. Gary Robson. So we're at 3-3 and we go all the way once more tonight. Seventh and final leg is Chris the throw first. It is Chris game Mason on. with the advantage of throw in the last leg of this second semi-final here at the Super Series. 100. He starts with a tongue. He'll be happy with that. He'll be okay with that. This really is... 60. You're thinking in your head in these games, you've got to be out in 15 darts. 60. You get the sense of the minute, a trouble of visit will do. Mason's going to need a 140 to turn it into that big save there from Robbo. Still slightly behind. The first start, not helping Mason, just a touch. Under. 57. And another treble. This visit gives Robson half a chance. And he's filling his boots and taking it. 121. Gary Watson doesn't care for fairy tale stories. He just wants to get his way through to the final of the meeting with Tony O'Shea. But Chris Mason has other 92. ideas. 92. But Robson will have six on 238 to progress through to the final to face the silverback for £5,000. One hundred. And plays in Champions League. Huge treble. Yeah, massive in the context of the game. You think that. Mace really needs to get two trebles himself now. He's struggling here. 96. These aren't badly thrown Gary, you darts. They're missing by millimetres, but... 94. Chris, you require 96. 96. For the match, for the final. Went double 18 for double top. 
And so 56. Gary Wilson returns Gary for 44, 44 to take himself into the final to face Tony O'Shea for the £5,000 top prize and the place in Champions Week. Double eight. 28. And it doesn't go. And so Chris Mason is on the verge of the final. 14. This could begin to become Game one of the starting stories of 2022. One of the stories of the Super Series because Mace the Ace is in to the final. He beats Gary Robson. 4-3 in a deciding leg in one of the most tense games you will ever see in this competition with an average just underneath 95. Three maximums to his name. Four out of 11 on the doubles. Gary Robson got himself a 1-3-6. That was the highest checkout in this match. But Chris Mason is through to the finals of the Super Series. He is going to take on Tony O'Shea in around about 10 minutes time for the £5,000 top prize and a place in Champions Week. It's going to be a battle of the two commentators for the final place in Champions Week. Do stick with us because we could have a fairy tale story here at the Super Series. It's going to be Tony O'Shea up against Chris Mason for their chance to put themselves in with a chance of winning the £5,000 top prize and then the subsequent 20 at the Red Carpet Champions Week. Goodness me. Take a breath, everyone. Take a breath. It has been some night so far. There is still more drama to come. The final is O'Shea against Mason. And that's coming up in a few minutes' time. But first, Scott Mitchell is going to head up to the balcony. He's going to have a few words with Chris Murphy after this short break.
a welcome back and what a night it has been a long night scott i'm sure you're aware on your first night here but it's because all the matches have been going for three and we now do have our finalists tony o'shea and chris mason uh incredible evening mason getting through four three of course he did uh, but gary robson missed opportunity there didn't he to win the semi-final he did and he's downstairs he said he hadn't thought about darts for a while and he thought about those last two darts which probably a mistake not the time to be thinking gary chris mason getting through uh, it's been an incredible week for him it really is like roy of the rovers stuff isn't it he's been commentating he said himself he's known as a commentator now it's a lot of people in this audience watching at home won't even know him as a darts player yet there he is in the final no very much so and, it, and, and it's not like it's been a short time it's been a long time for him in the, in the competitive state and also he's been a commentator that long he's probably more than a broadcaster now than a than a pundit because obviously he hadn't played for that long so he'll have to go back now as like the darts pundit like me yeah a remarkable stuff well Tony O'Shea has had an incredible night as well both players have been involved in four threes in every single match they've played and O'Shea that nine dart shootout earlier on a dead heat as well I don't think anybody has got to a final in more tight circumstances Chris Mason has a saying as a pundit if your name's on pot do you think Tony's might be look Tony's old enough to know that he thinks his name's on the pot he's got away with murder this evening they've been throwing banana skins at the gorilla the silverback and he hasn't slipped on one yet well, the prize for getting through by winning this final, this race to seven legs, is £5,000 and, of course, a place at Champions Week, which is next week. And we can take a look at the players that are already there with one space left to fill. So Robert Owen, Graham Hall, Chaz Barstow, Daryl Pilgrim, Lee Evans, Kieran Tian, Graham Usher, Conan Whitehead, Gavin Carlin and Peter Jakes all won their weeks. But we can now reveal that Josh Payne has been added to the lineup as the best performing runner up because Scott Williams is unable to play because he's going to be where you are playing in players championship events on the PDC Pro Tour. But Josh Payne, an excellent addition to that lineup. Yeah, absolutely. He's been impressive. You know, the disappointment of losing in card last year. Josh has come here and set his stall on it. And really, he was unlucky not to win a week. So whoever wins this match will get through. Come on, I'm going to push you for a prediction. It's, it's, it's a bit of a coin flip, isn't it? But give us a name. Do you know what? My heart says Chris because of all the comeback scenarios. But my head says Tony's just got to have a little bit more. Will it be silverware for the silver back? Or can Chris Mason really do this? Well, we're about to find out in the company of this man and Henry Deacon. And Marco Meyer has one last match to get the players on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finals time here at Finals Week at Amonis Super Series here at Amonis Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Please welcome the two players on the stage. It's silverback Tony O'Shea and Mace the Ace Chris Mason. The Super Series scriptwriters have given us some drama for the ages this evening. A nine-dart shootout going to overtime, two semi-finals going to a deciding leg, and possibly the story of all stories. Chris Mason may well be one game away from Champions Week. He takes on Tony O'Shea. The winner will get the final spot in the darting dozen. And so, for Chris Mason, the 52-year-old from Bristol, the two-time former World Championship semi-finalist, is a game away from qualification. He takes on a three-time BDO World Championship runner-up in Tony O'Shea, the 61-year-old from Stockport, who has had success first on the Seniors Tour this Chris year. Throw first. Chris Mason Came has on. been his first throws on a major stage in 12 years. And so it all boils down to this. Are we going to see the ultimate tungsten fairy tale and Chris Mason turn back the time and qualify for Champions Week? Darts like that will help. 
one on the end, 15. Antonio Shea has his own story to write. Sixty-six. And alongside me to talk through all the darting drama to come is the 2015 video world champion Scott Mitchell. This could be the tungsten story or one of the tungsten stories of 2022. It could. As I said, upstairs, my heart says and hopes that maybe Mace can live the dream. But my head says Tony has the head 60. for it. Now, just a reminder for those of you joining us on Sporty Stuff TV, we will be leaving you very shortly. So head over to the Modus Super Series YouTube channel to watch this final unfold on and end, possibly 40. watch a moment of history in this tournament. And so Chris Mason, after 12 darts, leaves 74 to hold in the first leg. Now, 59. this is the one Chris game in the week 74. where the players will bull up in the practice room. Mason has the honour of the darts. And so double 12 for the first leg. Yeah, it has and been shown in the first leg. Chris Mason Chris has Mason. a 1-0 lead. He takes the opening rubber. Second leg is three to throw first. Game on. But tonight has been a night that perhaps sums up Tony O'Shea's career. Because he is the ultimate darting scrapper. He is someone that will always go to the well and will always do things the most dramatic of ways. Indeed he will, even if he's got to break the throw. 93. Tidy pick up from Mace there, last dart. Could be important. They were all important. In 100. Finals. nothing like playing in the final there's nothing that makes your heart beat it's the place you find out about yourself one of them 40. i've got a feeling nobody likes me chris mason's wanted to qualify for champions week he's already qualified for tonight chris mason decided uh, chris mason decided to go upstairs mm. i think you may have some at there h you may have some at 100. Back to the serious action. Mason should have fought that one through to leave himself a finish. And if O'Shea 100. Crank, crank in, can crank in another treble, it would have left him on a finish. So Mason gets away of it. 6 on 1, 6 8 for a 2 0 lead. Mason has turned the throw. He will wish to 16. keep continuing to squeeze. That's a good start from O'Shea. That's a good second dart. 159. And that is Chris probably the perfect 108. third dart as well. Talk about timing. Treble 16. We'll give him a dart at tots for 2-0. 88. Tony, you require 24. And so O'Shea returns to 24. He's crafted this opportunity out. Yeah, that's game short in the second dart line. Leg as well. Tony O'Shea. Third leg, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. A rare holder throw there for Tony O'Shea. But if there's anywhere to do it, probably the final's the best time to start it. 60. And possibly 159 one could be the shot that changes everything because Chris Mason looked as if he was rolling his way into a 2-0 lead. But have a look at this for a response. One because to every single setback this week, Chris Mason has found an answer. And a way. Without doubt, he's found a way. 81. O'Shea just drops that one into the one, making life a little more difficult. It's just one leg at a time. 
100. They should be happy with that on throw. 140 here would have put Tony back in the mix. 70. Chris, you require 161. So it's 161 for Mason. And as a lead, it is these as well. He'll be going down now. Will he go for 137. The perfect setup that we saw from Tony O'Shea in leg two has just been matched by Mason in leg three. How do you like them darting apples? 45. Chris should require 24. He's got six at this. He only yeah, needs the one. Game That's a 13 a bird dart leg. leg. Chris Mason. And what a time and what a place to do that. He's averaging 103 and a half. Ford He's two, one up. to throw first. Game on. He's halfway there. He was 18-1 to, to win Group A at the start of the week. He was the darting outsider. Eighty-five. I've got to say that he has been the revelation of the week for all of us. He really 60. has stood there toted. No matter what happens from here on in, he will walk away being amazingly happy that he's in the final. But the competitor that he is, I know that he is. One on the forty. Now he's in the final. He will definitely want to win it. There was no expectation at the start of the week, but he's got the One chase through now. 40. However, O'Shea is now the favourite to win leg four. Let's not discredit O'Shea one bit. Because he's had to ride the tungsten storm throughout the course of the evening. 100. 4-3 in both of his games in the group. He had to go to overtime in the nine-dart shootout. 4-3 against Dubbridge in the semi-final. 59. He's had to battle his way here. When you're thrown in this situation, Mason would have gone to the ball. 66. 140 there. Tony, you require 142. And then when he's got a five and a one in there, 66 was best case scenario. O'Shea has now got double 11. Yeah, oh, that's game oh, short on the board line. Two, so Tony O'Shea. Throw. These boys, these boys, these boys. What are they doing to each other? Fifth flag is Chris is from first. Here on. at the Super Series. Best of three for the final spot in Champions Week. 100. You cannot script this. Now, just to remind you, if you are joining us on Sporty Stuff TV, switch over to the Moda Super 16. Series YouTube channel because you do not want to miss the thrilling conclusion to Week 12. This is going down to the wire, to the very last dart. 100. And tons of everything at the minute. 25. This fifth leg is so important. 25. Could the momentum of the match go here, right in the middle of it? Mason is 100 ahead, plus 96. These. O'Shea hasn't really made a real attack on the Mason throw so far. One of them that one, two, one could change that metric if Mason comes up dry with this visit. And he's not going to do that. Once again, one of them five. we're seeing his bounce back ability after that one superb one to four two from Tony O'Shea. 95. Chris, you require 100. So here we go. It's Mace now 72. Will he go across to the 12? Or he's going to. He stayed there. Double 10. 90. Do apologize there. I don't know why he'd have gone for a 12. I don't know why I was thinking there. Need my math, Scott. One on the end, 40. Chris, you require 10. Double five. No score. Oh, it's got on the other side, and this could all change. Tony, you it require could all change 60. this visit to the board. 
A bit of marred or lateral drift there for Mason. Forty. Chris should require the first ten. Start hampered the other two there from Tony. You can hear the crowd ooing and ahhing. Is that affecting the players? It's double two. Eight. It didn't look Tony, likely. Tony, you require 20. It didn't look likely. And O'Shea, whose match all night has been to break, could get his biggest one of the evening here. That's a blocker. No That's score. A blocker. And Mason's in the madhouse. Chris, you require two. I can hear everybody down the pub. Yeah, that's been shown in the fifth line. Chris Mason. In. Chris is on the cusp. Six leg, it's Tony the throw first. This could be Game on. miraculous for Mason. He could be a leg away now. He's 501 points away. 60. For completing the darting fairy tale. He spent weeks upon weeks sat in the chair that me and Scott are in now, saying 57. he has a good a chance. He was playing himself down. He was playing his chances down. Well, he can play them up for all it's worth now. 60. Two visits of 60 from O'Shea. 45. And two lackluster visits from Mason, it has to be said. The tension, you can feel the tension in their arms. 77. This is one of those matches where you just cannot take your eyes off the screen. Because you never know what's going to happen next. One on the own, 40. Sometimes the pictures speak more than the words, Henry. 100. Tony, you require 164. Seeing is believing. Six and one six four for a say uh, for O'Shea. Ninety six. Could turn a corner there from O'Shea. Mason needs a treble. Fifty nine. Tony, you require sixty eight. Six from sixty eight to take us to a deciding leg, and the way tonight is gone. Perhaps it is fitting. One dud at tops. Forty eight. He's going to return though for free in hand at double 10, but we saw how much of a scrap Chris Mason made out of that scenario in the previous leg. And he's gonna be under pressure, severe pressure. <laughs> go high, go high. One on the M40, Tony, you require 20. as wide as two dinner plates there, Mason, but it's... Yeah, O'Shea that's been shown in the sixth slide. Tony O'Shea. And so it all comes down to this. We know 11 of the 12 names that are going to Seven participate ten, final in Champions it's Week. To throw first. One leg Game on. of 501 will decide who the 12th and final name will be. It is Chris Mason who has the dart. And if he holds, he will be there. 60. For O'Shea, he'll have to do something that he's done quite a lot this evening. And that is break. 41. O'Shea's darts in this match have been under the treble 20, which don't help him with the angle of dart. Mason's right in there. And he'll be happy with that turn at this stage. There we go, O'Shea again, just under. And he floats that 100. one past it. I do wonder why he doesn't move with that blocker in the way. But Tony knows the way by. Far be it for me to tell him. He's been doing it for years, and Mason is just doing the same. 100. Trebles are like gold dust right now, and every single treble is being warred on in the crowd. 100. Another huge ton. It's an exchange of them at the minute. Four in succession. But that's a timely slip, an untimely slip for Chris Mason. That's a great recovery second dart. Oh, 65. That's, that's the worst possible time for a bounce out. 
I don't think it hit a wire, I think. I think it hit the other dart. It was a dart on dart out, I think. One on the room, 40. And he's been punished to the hilt. Mason needs something big, needs something inspired. He needs a treble now. He needs a treble with this last dart. 60. And so Tony Tony O'Shea on Shanghai for Champions Week. Forty-two. Chris you require one hundred and sixty. So is it going to be the story of all stories? Tops. Game and Chris shots. And the and the kit Chris the Super Series. Mace has played his aces and he has qualified for Champions Week. It is the Super Series story of 2022. From commentator to champion, Chris Mason is there with an 88 and a half average, two maximums in the match, four out of 10 on the doubles. The highest checker of the match of 142, and Chris Mason is going to be the 12th name added to the Champions Week role of honor. He was meant to be commentating on Champions Week. He's going to do one better than that. He is going to be playing in Champions Week. And so let's hear from our Week 12 champion, Chris Mason. He's talking to our fellow Chris, Chris Murphy. Thanks, Henry. Chris Mason, what have you just done? I, I don't know. I'm, I, literally, I just feel like I've been put through the ringer all night. It's, um, yeah, like, enjoyable in a, in a mad kind of way, but wow, this is so tough. Like, tougher than anything I've ever, ever played in, ever. At the start of the week, you started producing some good performance as people started taking note. But this night has been, not just here at the Super Series, one of the craziest nights of darts ever, anywhere. Yeah, the nine dart shootout and then not knowing what was going on with that. And then, obviously, Richie and then Tony having to have another throw. Yeah, it was just, it was just mad. But it's been a, it's, it's been a mad but in, in, enjoyable week. And listen, a couple of old timers and a couple <laughs> of old faces. And I hope everybody's been totally, um, totally enjoyed it. You played your, your chances down from the beginning of the week when we spoke to you in commentary. You were saying, you know, I'm just going to go and see how it goes. Mm. Did you ever think you'd be standing here right now as the winner? No, no, not at all. No, not ever. Um, you know, it, it's really what you do in a Tuesday night down the Red Lion or down the Dog and Duck. You, you know, we all know, like all, all the players that, that play in this all know that they can play to a certain ability, but it's, it's them producing and getting a bit of luck. Listen, I'm the first to admit, some of the stuff I threw this week was horrific. Um, but it's all about timing, and, uh, and this is like no other tournament. You know, it's, you know, it's not a knockout thing. You've got to change your mindset a lot. And, yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's incredible fun, but really tough. Well, a couple of things to ask you about moving forward as well. First of all, you've been invited to the World Seniors. Looking forward to that? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. L listen, it, it was my choice to try and qualify by right and see if I could get myself on the tour. Unfortunately, with this uh, and the workload that this has taken on, I was unable to uh, attend as many tournaments as I wanted. So, listen, the offer was there. I'd, I'd be a fool to turn it down. I'm extremely grateful to all of the organisers for, for giving me a shot. And, listen, who knows? <laughs> And I'm not sure if the next bit is good news or bad news based on some of the stuff that you've said about how you felt this week, but you've got to come back and do it all again next week. Champions Week next week, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, not Monday. <laughs> not Monday. I am not doing a Monday. It, it is. It's uh, mentally and physically the, the toughest thing in darts I've ever played. I've played in many pentathlons and we, we had the Crondon Park Champions League of Darts. This, this is just a different level. Well, Chris Mason's defied even his own expectations here at the Super Series. Maybe he's not a commentator anymore. Maybe he's a dance oh, no, player I am. again. Oh, I am. <laughs> and he will be back at Champions Week. £5,000 richer as well. It all gets underway from 9.30 a.m. on Sporty Stuff TV and the Modus Super Series YouTube channel on Monday morning. Mason says he's not playing then, but we'll wait and find out. Uh, all these I'm people are bed. waiting to, uh, <laughs> to give you some congratulations, Mason. We'll get you going and get their applause. Thanks, Paul. But Mason's aced it here at the Super Series for this week, and he will be back on Champions Week on Monday. Chris Mason, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet, and William Hill.